12 are present, Your Honor. We have a quorum and we will proceed. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation offered by Alder Bill Galvin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, stand one nation, undisable, liberty, and justice for all. Justice for all. All right, um, should I start the invocation? Yes, please, Alder. Okay, thank you. I wanna start out by uh, thanking all our healthcare professionals, city employees, and those that make sure we're able to eat, stay warm and be safe and secure in our homes for uh, the risks they're putting themselves through and all that they're doing for us. Um, second, I thought long and hard about uh, this, the start of my third term, and I remember how it was my first and even my second term, still kind of learning how to go about uh, being a city council person. So at this time, at the start of our new city council session, I want all of us to consider for a few moments the responsibility we have and the interests of all the citizens we were elected to represent. For the next two years, we will face many difficult situations and decisions. We will be tested how to do the most good while mitigating the harm. The decisions we reach will not always be the best for everyone, and we should always keep this in mind. We need to have empathy for those our actions will adversely affect. I ask we always treat each other with respect and at the end of every meeting, we leave any adversity at the door. I also ask we take the time to try and understand where those who have different opinions from ours are coming from, that their opinions are just as valid as ours and that we all have the same goal, which is to maintain and improve Green Bay as a great place to live. Thank you. Thank you, Alder, for those words. And now we're on to an exciting one for uh, for Alders and for the city, um, the oath of office for the new and more seasoned Alders. So, Clerk, please administer the oath of, oath of office to the 2020-2022 Green Bay Common Council. So what I'm going to do is I will um, read the oath, and then you can repeat after me when I – Pause for I, then say your name, and then when I say district, say your district, please. So please raise your right hand. I. 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 Veronica Corpus Dax. Bill Galvin. Chris Weary. Kathy LaFave. Being duly elected as Alderperson of the City of Green Bay. Being, Being duly, duly elected, elected as Alderperson of the City of Green, Green, Bay. Bay. Green, Green, Bay. Green Bay. For district. For district, for district, district, for district six, do solemnly swear, do solemnly do swear, solemnly swear, 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 swear that, I will, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That, that I will support, support the Constitution, the Constitution of, the of the United States. United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And that I will face faithfully perform the duties of said office and that I will faithfully perform the duties of said office, 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 office to the best to the best of my ability to the best of my ability my ability so help me god so help, help me god. god help me god and then if everyone could just turn in their paperwork to me that would be great just sign it i will witness thank you Thank you, Clerk. Congratulations, all. Uh, on to the election of our Common Council President. So um, we have a few housekeeping items to sort of take care of or agree upon before we move forward with the election. Um, probably be the easiest to do this with an open ballot, so I will entertain a motion to hold an open ballot for the election of Common Council Motion President. to hold an open ballot. Second. So we have a motion made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. Uh, any discussion on that? All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed nay. The ayes have it. We will have an open ballot here. Um, the other thing to discuss is whether or not we want to have a runoff election. And by that, I mean the lowest vote getter in uh, our round of, of vote counting here would, would drop off and then the top two would move on. Um, we don't have to do it that way. That's an option for you as, as members of council. 
Um, so I would just kind of open it up to the floor and, and ask if anybody has an objection to handling it that way, or if you'd prefer to leave everybody on the ballot um, every round through. I'd prefer to leave everyone on the ballot, Mr. Mayor, until they choose to drop out. Okay, thanks, Alder. Usually do. <laughs> they usually do. <laughs> Any other feelings among Alders for that? So we, we can, under suspension of the rules, which takes a two-thirds vote, um, use a runoff style election. Uh, as I said, it's not, it's not necessary but it is an option. Well, if Alder Weary wants a, I don't know, either one is fine by me. And if we got one Alder, I'm assuming there are probably a couple others who feel the same way. I'm, it's fine by me to uh, keep the Alder, okay. let, let the let the Alder drop out as they choose to. Who knows, right. maybe the bottom getter will end up winning if, if uh, someone else drops out or who knows. Sure, yeah. sure. All right. Thanks for those comments there. Um, so with that discussion being dispensed with, um, I will at this point um, entertain motions uh, to put uh, names into nomination here. Nominate Burnett. Nominate Dorf. Okay, do we have seconds for each of those motions? I can and, um, second for Dorf. Okay, so we do have uh, a nomination uh, for Alder Dorf, made by Alder Galvin and seconded by Alder Stevens. Also a nomination for Alder Brunette with a second by Johnson. Or, I'm sorry, with a, so we have a nomination for Alder Brunette. Do we have a second? Second, Weary. Seconded by Alder Weary. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Mr. Mayor, it looks like uh, Alder Stoyer is trying to speak, but he's on mute. Uh, very good, thanks Alder. Alder Stoyer? I'm sorry. You, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So in order to be nominated, you can do it yourself or do you have to have somebody else do it? I, I believe you can make the nomination. Um, Attorney Chavez can correct me if I'm wrong. You do need a second, however. We call a point of order, Mayor. Um, th does a nomination, according to Robert's rules, require a second? My understanding is that it does not. Yeah, Attorney Chavez, can you clarify? The second is usually the person accepting the nomination. Ah. But it is not a requirement, is that correct? Um, let me double check for instances where somebody nominates themselves. Older story, if you want to be nominated, I'll nominate you. Well, I'm just thinking out loud here. <laughs> so. I'm going I'm to hold off. Okay, so not a nomination, Older story? No. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we have two candidates for council president. Uh, since we do have an open ballot, the way that we're going to do this is uh, the clerk is going to roll through all of the council seats. Uh, and uh, when you're called upon, you will state who you would like to vote for for council president. And before we get to that, I should ask um, the candidates, and my apologies here, if, uh, if they'd like to say anything on their own behalf for their nominations. Alder Dorf. Um, thank you. Um, thank you for the nomination. I, I do accept the nomination. Most of you know me. Um, you've seen me work over the last two years or over the last four years. And I guess I just want to say th maybe three things that are important to me. Um, fairness and kindness would be the first thing. Um, I believe in, in being fair and I believe in looking at all sides of issues. Um, the second thing would be, I'm not afraid to take a stand. I'm not afraid to stand up for what I believe is right and, um, and to express my opinions. And I'm also not afraid to compromise. 
if a compromise is, is what's called for, because there are shades of gray sometimes. Everything is not always black and white. And finally, I'm willing to put in the time. I already put in a lot of the time. I, I enjoy going to all the different meetings, and if I can't make it, I watch them. I try to be as informed as I possibly can. And if I were to be honored by getting your vote today, I would promise to represent you and represent the city in the best way that I could. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alder. Uh, Alder Brunette. Uh, looks like there's an audio issue. We're, yeah, we're not hearing you on on computer audio, Alder. Uh, let me see if you're on. Yeah, but he is on he's on a Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, I'm very, very, very sorry about that. I had uh, an issue with the phone. I'm going to step out real quick. My uh, audio on my phone was a little messed up, and uh, or my computer, and now I had to go by phone. So I apologize for that, and I apologize for uh, not fully listening to Alder Dorf. Uh, thank you for the nomination, and I, I accept the nomination. I've been on the city council now for four years and I represented two separate districts and I've had experience chairing a committee on the uh, Brown County board and I've been vice president of the city council. I also like Alderdorf do greatly love this city. I've lived here much of my life. I have represented two different city council districts and lived in three different neighborhoods. It's one thing that I would like to do in the city of Green Bay is to keep our city government nonpartisan. You know, we have a lot of different political perspectives within our city. And one thing that I've never done is get uh, endorsed or do any political activities through a political party or special interest groups. And I think this day and age in our city, county, state, and federal government's history, we need people who can look at issues from a very nonpartisan position. And that's the thing that I would do as leader of the city council if, if you would vote for me. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Um, so with those nominations being put forward, I do think a motion um, to accept both of them and, and move forward with the election. Motion to accept the uh, nominations. Motion made by Alder Galvin. Second. Second by Alder Corpus Dax. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Uh, and now, as I said, uh, Clerk Teske will uh, roll through our council here and um, when called upon, just state your preference. Barb Dorf. Alder Dorf. Veronica Corpus Dax. Alder Dorf. Lynn Gerlach. Alder Dorf. Bill Galvin. Alderdorf. Craig Stevens. Alderdorf. Kathy Lafave. Uh, Jesse Burnett. Randy Scannell. Alderdorf. Chris Weary. Alderman Burnett. Brian Johnson. Alder Burnett. Mark Stoyer. Chelsea Brunet. John Vanderlees. John Vanderlees. <sighs> yeah, he has a he has a cell phone. Wait, let me. He's on he's undone. He's unmuted. 
Not able to hear you, Alder Vanderleest. Oh, here. Okay. Alder Vanderleest? Jesse Burnett. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. And Jesse Burnett. Burnett. So it's a tie, 6-6. Six, six. So we do have already is necessary. Um, so we will need to revote. Barb Dorf. Alder Dorf. Veronica Corpus Dax. Alder Dorf. Lynn Gerlach. Alder Dorf. Bill Galvin. Alder Dorf. Craig Stevens. Alder Dorf. Kathy Lafave. Alder Burnett. Randy Scannell. Alder Dorf. Christopher Weary. Alderman Burnett. Brian Johnson. Alder Burnett. Mark Stoyer. Alder Burnett. John Vanderleest. Jesse Burnett. And Jesse Burnett. Burnett. It's still a tie. Uh, <clears throat> well, as I said, we, we do need a majority here. So I don't know if there are, are thoughts to be shared. Um, but otherwise, we'll just continue to vote. Would you like Mr. Mayor, I don't know how to raise my hand to speak. Can I speak? Uh, yes. Older girl I, have, I have been doing a little reading about how um, city governments work because I'm a newcomer. And it was my understanding that in the case of a tie, that the mayor votes. Yes, that is um, that is my prerogative. Uh, and that's the advice so that I am able to vote. Uh, of course, I, I know that when in the normal course of uh, course of events, we have tie votes at council. Um, that is something that I'm able to do is break a tie. Um, I do feel that this is a decision of council. Uh, and while I'm sort of a quasi member of the body, I'd be most comfortable with council making this decision. Uh, of course, I'm not interested in being here all night either. Um, so we will continue to roll through a few more times, but um, I don't think it's in the interest of the city to have a deadlock or um, you know, a council without a president. So um, that's something that I, that I could reconsider at some point. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, can I just Mayor if I could. Uh, Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think that's a wise choice. You know, I've been through, I don't know, eight, nine of these by now. And I know when, when I became council president, I think we went through 12 or 15 votes between myself and Alderman DeWayne. Um, it works itself out. And I think I appreciate you staying out of it because this is our leadership. This is the council's leadership and we need to work it out, however that might be. So uh, let it run its course no matter uh, how long it takes. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Vander, did you have something to say? Yes. Uh if it would be okay with the council approval, uh, how about a coin toss? <laughs> that, that is, um, you know, that uh, I believe that is that kind of um, a tie break is acceptable, but it would have to be approved by majority of uh, of council. I make a motion that we use a coin toss. It would actually require a vote to suspend the rules. Attorney Chavez. It would actually require a two thirds vote to suspend the rules. Very good. Alder Vanderlees, did you have a motion? Yes, I have a motion. Uh, we use a coin toss to determine who will be the, the council president. If, 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 if the council agrees with the two-thirds majority, I say well, let's toss the coin. Thank you. I need a second on that. Thanks, Alder. Is there a second? I'll second that. I, uh, I don't think this position is it's a significant position, but I think any one of us here is qualified to do it. 
I think both candidates are qualified to do it. I, I do have a little bit of an umbrage in that I believe from the little bit I'm getting into that old pattern of us and them and uh, partisan bull crap. Uh, there is no partisanship here on the council. Um, and to bring that up, I, I just makes me suspicious. I don't, I remember uh, when I first started, there was very much a strong feeling of us against them and got to have somebody in there who can oppose the mayor. There's two different camps. And uh, I've always thought of us all as one, all together. And there is nothing about this job that is partisan or that requires anybody. Point of order, are we speaking to a coin flip, Mr. Mayor? I'm making the second. I believe that gives me the I floor. think you're blathering on about non-related uh, items, Randy. Alder Weary, I get, I've Alder got Weary the Alder Scano has the floor. Point to, well, you made an, uh, 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 an out of order. You're, you can do that. I'm done anyway. Very good. So we have a motion and a second. Um, as Attorney Chavez stated, this requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, so we will use I have my vote. button pressed, Mr. Mayor. Apologies, Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just remind everybody we're on our second vote. Like I said before, I think I, when I became president, we went through 15 votes. We're on number two. I think we're getting way ahead of ourselves. If anything, we move to a closed ballot. That allows people maybe to vote differently than they would, and, and we can elect our leader of our, uh, of our council. Uh, I don't want to leave this up to random, so thanks. Thanks, Alder Weary. Further comments on the motion that's on the floor? Again, this requires two thirds vote, so we will use the board. Okay. Okay, just, Mayor, just give me one second, okay? And then I'll display the vote. Okay. <laughs> And then, uh, yes. while well, she's preparing, I'm sorry. Um, I just there, I would like a, to. Can I state? Uh, there's okay. Yeah, there's a roll call ongoing. Okay. All right. So we're going to have to undo. Um, just give us one more moment, please. vote is three to nine. Three in favor and nine against. Can the motion fails nine three, is that correct? That is that is correct. Okay. Can we, Mayor, can you see that? No, oh, oh, I cannot okay. see the vote. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, motion fails. Mm -hmm. uh, are there comments? Otherwise, we'll go to the vote again. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could, uh, who voted for it, since we can't see the vote? Um, just give me one moment. So Vanderleest, Alders Vanderleest, Brunette, and Scandal, Scandal, excuse That's, me, voted I'm sorry, we favor. can't hear you. Alders Vanderleest, Scandal, and Brunette voted Thank in you. favor. Okay, so we will go to the vote again. Clerk Teske. Uh, you're on mute. I'll just. There we go. Start again, Alder or uh, Clerk Teske, please. Barb Dorf. Alder Dorf. Veronica Corpus Dax. Alder Dorf. Lynn Gerlach. 
Alderdorf. Bill Galvin. Alderdorf. Craig Stevens. Alderdorf. Kathy Lafave. Alder Burnett. Randy Scannell. Alderdorf. Christopher Weary. Alderman Burnett. Brian Johnson. Alder Burnett. Mark Stoyer. Alder Burnett. John Vanderlees. Alder Burnett. And Jesse Burnett. Burnett. And it's still a tie. Suspend the rules and conduct a closed ballot. Motion to suspend the rules. I believe that's uh, Attorney Chavez could chime in. I, I believe that's just a simple majority. Or do we need to? That is correct. Um, that is not actually suspending the rules. It's just going back to it. So that's just a simple majority. Oh, so a motion to go to a closed ballot. A motion has been Second. made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. Is that right? Sure. To move to a closed ballot. So the way that this is um, going to have to be conducted is through email. Um, so if you could please email Clerk Teske your votes for council president. Uh, Mayor, I don't know if I can, how I can do that. I think I can minimize this. Mayor, I believe we actually have to vote on the motion first. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep, very good. Um, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. So we will use the closed ballot. Thanks, Alder. Um, so again, just use your email to send that vote over to Clerk Teske. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Does that mean that I have to use the city email, which I've never logged on to? Uh, no, whatever um, whatever email is at your disposal, just make sure it gets to Chris Teske at her at her official email. Okay. Yeah. And can you give me that email again? It's C. I'm sorry. K R I. Just a minute. I'm sorry. Can I already hear you? Yes. This is Celestine. K R I S is in Sam. T is in Tom. E at Green Bay WI dot gov. Okay, I think I missed one. K is in Kathy. R is in Robert. I S is in Sam. T is in Tom. What was the next one? E as an elephant. E. Yes. As, as an elephant. Edward. Okay. Yes. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. And we will just sort of stand informal until those votes are available to Clerk Teske. I am waiting for District 6 and District 11. Yeah, I'm having trouble just a minute. <laughs> Chris, do you have that email now? District 11, I did receive your email. Thank you.
Hey, did you get mine? Yes, I did. And it's still a tie. Mm -hmm. Keep going. <laughs> Do we have to vote again? Another uh, another round of secret balloting here. Okay. And it's still a tie. Any comments from Alders? Mayor, I'd like to introduce the coin toss again. <laughs> Make a motion to introduce the coin toss. I think we're going to be here quite a while otherwise. Your motion lost. You can't reintroduce it. Okay, somebody else has to do it. Oh, the way, can you talk about how you broke your tie some years back? Oh, they're weary? Oh, well, like I said, I think we went 12 rounds at least. Then we took a, we took a 10 minute timeout and we came back and it was decided. That's a little tougher here, of course. But. A little tougher, yeah. All right, we'll have another round of secret balloting. Like I said, my preference is to not be here all night, however. We have some business to attend to. And it is, um, as Attorney Chavez said, as Alder Gerlach has stated, it's the prerogative of the mayor to break a tie. So I would, uh, I would urge you to break the tie on your own. And we will have another round.
And we still have a tie. Mayor, just a point of information. Um, Alder, Alder Weary alluded to the fact that Alder Vanderlees was unable to reintroduce that motion. Can another Alder reintroduce that motion? It would be a motion to reconsider somebody who was on the um, deciding side of it. Okay, so so I was on the deciding side of that. So I would I would move that we reconsider. I'll second that. I'll second that. If it's if it's um, appropriate, being that I'm one on the ballot. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. I was muted. Um, and my question was uh, if the second also needed to be from the prevailing side, Attorney Chavez. I have to double check it, but my recollection is that it is not. So I voted no to the coin toss the first time. And I should say I voted yes to the coin toss the first time and that was a I lost that motion and so I would be comfortable seconding based on this and if mayor if you're if you're okay I'd like to just make a few comments to that but uh, yeah so well you Alder were on, well just one second Alder Brunette I okay. think Attorney Chavez is just checking on the procedural question okay. Anyone can second a motion to reconsider. Very good. So um, we have a motion from Alder Johnson, a second originally, I think, by Alder Vanderlees to use a coin flip to determine the outcome here. Um, as you all know, it requires suspension of the rules, so it's two thirds vote. So we will again use the board. Um, but prior to getting to that, Alder Brunette, did you have? Yeah, I, I, I am in favor of the coin toss. It just seems like a non you know, partial way for this to be decided. Both Alder Dorf and I are qualified as are all other 10 members of the council. I just think leave it to chance and move forward from there. So I'm in, for, I'm, I'm in support of a coin, Josh. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Alder Dorf. Um, I'm not in support of a coin toss. I think we still can work this out. Um, I, I wouldn't want to lose by a coin toss. I wouldn't want to win by a coin, coin toss. Um, I would just ask the alders to to keep trying. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Further comments on that motion? Otherwise, we will use the board. No, I have to log back in. <sighs> <clears throat> did did the board come up? Uh, not yet. Okay, good. good. Oh, you got the board. Did you want to display? No. Oh, um, Alder Alder Lefebvre, right? Alder Lefebvre, can you please vote? It's not up. And Alder, it's, it's not up. It's not up for me either. For Alderdorf. Uh, 
Um, so is anyone having, so Alder Dorf, Alder Lefebvre, you're having difficulty, you can't get in? No, I, I'm in, I'm in civic clerk, but there's nothing. Sure. I'm in, I'm in as well in board view, but there's nothing. Can I vote verbally? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Mayor? Yep. Alderdorf votes no. Alder Lefebvre? Uh, no. Alder Lefebvre votes no. Yep. Give me one second. So that is um, five yes and seven no. Would you like a roll call of that? Alders, do you need to know who voted? Alder Weary looks like he requests a roll yes. call there. Okay. Or is All right. So um, Alders. Dorf, Galvin, Stevens, Scannell, Corpus Dax, Lefebvre, and Gerlach voted no. Alders Johnson, Weary, Burnett, Vanderleest, and Stoyer voted yes. Okay, so that motion fails. Any further comments on our nominations? All right, we will proceed to another round of secret balloting. And we still have a tie. Thank you, clerk. Additional comments? Alder Gerlach? Am I muted? Hmm. Uh, you're unmuted now. Oh, now you're muted again. Go ahead. Good. You go can ahead. hear me? Yes, so, go ahead. All this is a point of order, and I truly do not know the answer. Um, is it possible to go? There was another alder who was interested in being nominated. Is it possible to go back? Is it possible to start over 
and nominate that third person, it might be make all the difference. Attorney Chavez, assistance there? Um, I would say no, since we have an election underway. Okay, thank you. Mayor, this is um, Alder Lefebvre. Yeah, Alder. I think it's time. I will vote this time. I would like to make a motion that we have a coin toss. I think this is going to go on for quite a while. Um, and I voted no in the affirmative, or no, you know, the um, majority. Right. I'd like to change. Okay. So Alder Lefebvre makes a motion. Make, Alder Lefebvre makes a motion for a coin toss. Is there a second? Second, Stoyer. Seconded by Alder. There still requires suspension of the rules, so we're going to use the board. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Alder Weary, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, before I vote, a quick Google search did find that you can make a motion to reopen the nominations. Robert's Rules of Order. So I just want that, to, uh, you know, I'd be glad if the attorney wants to back that up with something, but I, I think it is available to extent of my knowledge and from a quick search online, it is available, so. Thanks, Alder. And apologies, we do have a roll call ongoing, so. We're going to have to wait for that to be concluded. No, nope, that's fine. I'd just like the correct information available. Uh, Mayor, it's not coming up for mine. I think it's because I have to re-join uh, re, uh, each time. I go into my email and I come back. Right. I don't know if that's causing So, Alder Lefebvre, how would you like to vote? Um, I will vote yes that we do the coin toss. Thanks, Alder. Alder Lefebvre, open up a, a second uh, tab. You don't have to keep bouncing back and forth. Do a tab for email and a tab for civic mm -hmm. clerk. Okay, so. You're talking to someone who doesn't. Right. Alders. <laughs> I'm not. Alders, just one second. Ms. Jeffries. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so we have uh, eight to four. Um, eight in favor, four against. Would you like a roll call? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Alders, Dorf, Galvin, Stevens, and Scannell voted against. And Alders, Johnson, Weary, Brunette, Vanderleest, Stoyer, Corpus Dax, Lefebvre, and Gerlach voted in favor. All right. I'm not sure exactly how one administers a coin toss. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe we have uh, our IT director who is available to videotape the coin toss. Alder, I'm sorry, Attorney Chavez, do you have any suggestions? Nope, you can just toss a coin. Okay. Have somebody pick a side. Okay. Right, it's the choosing of the sides that I suppose. Yes. I'm unsure Turn of. Turn on your video. I'm sorry, Mayor, go ahead. Uh, I said it's the choosing of the sides I'm unsure of how to administer. So if- Alt Burnett can certainly choose first. Okay, very heads, good. Head, heads and tails. <laughs> heads and tails. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what I'm going to choose too. You, you said, I'll, I'll pick heads. I'll pick tails. We do have the video here. Looks like it appears to be a heads. Is that correct? It appears to be a heads to me. Okay. Congratulations, Alder Burnett. Yes, congratulations, Alder Burnett. Okay. Thank you. I, was that a, did so he sorry, toss it Mayor, or was it like me. the Super sorry. Bowl where he was I love, sorry. 
we haven't <laughs> tossed the coin yet. We were just showing the integrity oh, of the coin. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, that wasn't the toss? That wasn't the toss. <laughs> I, I accept. Thank you. I accept. No, no. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. excuse me. So sorry. Right. We were just Apologies. showing the integrity of the American 25 cent piece. So Very good. Here, here is the coin toss. Okay, here we are. This <sighs> carpet? No, uh, not seeing it. It's carpet. carpet. Quiet. <laughs> nope. And it is heads, it's heads. yes. It is heads, Mayor. Yes, congratulations, Alder Brunet. Thank you very much. Thank you to everyone. Congratulations again, Alder Brunet. This time for Thank real. You. Thank you. Now we're on to item G, election of Common Council Vice President. I will entertain a motion. Motion uh, to nominate uh, Alder Galvin. Second. Motion made to uh, nominate Alder Galvin, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Are there any I would like to make a motion. I'm sorry. I would like to make a motion to uh, nominate um, Alder Dorf. Is there a, a second? Seconded by Alder Gerlach. Is that something you would accept, Alder Dorf? I'm thinking. Alder. Is it all right with um, the Alder that's been nominated already? Uh, Alder Galvin, you care to make some comments? Oh, you're still muted you're here, muted. Alder. Let's. Uh, well, I, I guess let's wait and see who else uh, is is nominated. If there's any more uh, people who are nominated, and then I'll I'll make a uh, a comment then. Very good, Alder. Any other nominations? Are the nominations closed? Yes, seeing no other nominations, Alder Galvin, you have the floor. All right, then I would uh, uh, be fine with uh, not accepting the nomination. Thank you, Alder. So we have one candidate that's been submitted. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to accept the nominations. Mm -hmm. Accept. So move. Motion made by Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Stoyer. All of you please signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose nay. The ayes have it. And we have the nomination of Alder Dorf for vice president. Move to approve by acclamation. Second. Motion's been made by Alder Johnson to approve by acclamation, seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in if we have any dissension, um, please make your position known. Hearing none, congratulations, Alder Dorf, Madam Vice President. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you congratulations. 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 Okay. <clears throat> now we're on to approval of the minutes. So move. Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve the minutes of the April 1st and April 9th, 2020 meetings. Um, any corrections that need to be made? Seeing none, all in favor, please take the by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. The minutes have been approved. On to approval of the agenda. agenda. Motion to approve. So approved. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Any changes to make? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the agenda before you has been approved. Um, on to the report by the mayor. Uh, so just a, a few things for you tonight. Uh, unfortunately, uh, again, COVID related. It's uh, the new reality that, 
that we're dealing with here. And unfortunately, our, our reality is getting a, a bit worse in Brown County, as I'm sure you're all aware. Uh, cases have been increasing fairly significantly in recent days, uh, many of them associated with uh, a few clusters, um, JBS packing probably being the biggest source of new cases, according to our Brown County Public Health. So the CDC is in town to assist our, our county public health folks, um, and there's really no way to sugarcoat when the CDC comes to town. That's not good news, um, but we are hopeful that the uh, CDC will be able to, to offer our county public health department um, some guidance as, uh, as they work through this difficult time for, um, for the employees and the families who've been affected um, I just want to make it clear to the residents of the city, um, there's not a neighborhood uh, or a zip code or a, a type of person or a type of employee that needs to be avoided during these times. Uh, unfortunately, we all need to keep a distance from, from all of our residents. And anyone who's outside of your household um, needs to be kept at a safe social distance I just wanted to make the point that um, as many of you know, as alders know, as many community members know, um, but just to reinforce the point that our, our Brown County Public Health is the lead agency that's, that's leading the response here in Brown County. Um, our emergency manager is, is Chief Litton. Um, he and, and his command staff work very closely um, with our, our EOC and the county's EOC and the, the lead agency being public health um, but the county is the one who's, who's driving the bus here and, and all of us are, are here to assist them. Um, however, we do have a really important role to play as a city, uh, as mayor and as, as council members to do whatever we can to assist our community members um, and to strengthen in whatever way uh, the community and the economy that we have here in, in Greater Green Bay. Um, we have taken some steps, you as council, um, our administration has taken some steps to offer you know, liquor license relief to bars and restaurants um, to make some regulatory changes to allow for, for bars to offer certain products. Um, we've seen um, the, the program, a new program come online thanks to the revolving loan fund uh, committee and, uh, and our staff here at the city of Green Bay, um, which has established uh, a COVID relief loan program for businesses located in the city that have been impacted by the coronavirus. Um, but I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna call on you all again, as I have in the past, um, to please keep your eyes open, your ears open. Um, if you are seeing um, things that, that you think the city administration should be aware of, if you're seeing different communities who are assisting their businesses and community members in a way that you think might be possible here, obviously want to, uh, want to be pointed in that direction. Um, this is a very difficult time, it goes without saying, um, and it's incumbent upon us to do whatever we can to pull together as, as council, as, uh, as mayor, and assist our community members and, and make sure that, um, that we all get through this, this period. Um, as I said, after the, the swearing in, congratulations to all of our, our alders. Wanna say it again though, um, this is a really important role that you all have uh, I know that, that you know that, um, but just wanted to echo it and reinforce uh, the importance of having uh, a well-functioning, respectful body here at, at City Council as the legislative body in the city of Green Bay. And so congratulate you again your, on your victories and congratulate you on, on your swearing in here tonight. Um, finally, uh, I just want to take a moment, maybe a point of personal privilege to wish uh, a happy birthday to my son, Henry, who is 10 years old uh, today, which is pretty hard to believe, but he is, uh, he's a real blessing to me <clears throat> and my wife and the whole family. So happy birthday, Henry. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Happy Henry. birthday, Henry. Thanks, Alders. You don't want us to sing, believe me. <laughs> we could. That Mr. concludes Mayor, my question, report. If I could. That, that does conclude my report. I do have a question, Mr. Mayor, if I could. Alder Weary. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was wondering, because I don't see your report and you did a good job of bringing us up to date on the COVID. Could we have ending item perhaps mm -hmm. on a report of questions? I want to ask you during your report, but there's Apologies. more else to talk Alder about. Weary. Alder Weary, just one second. You were cutting out there. Ah. You couldn't read my moving hands. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering uh, if ending item here for Chief Litton to report on, on what's going on. Because if we have questions as a council or someone in the community would, we really shouldn't be asking you under your report by the mayor. Right. That's I, fair. No, Alder, um, you know, we do have an item under Committee of the Whole where um, – Chief Linden, as our emergency manager, um, could have an opportunity okay, to weigh perfect. in and, and could answer some questions Great. there. Then I'll keep mine for later. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Alder. Uh, as I said, that concludes my report, and we're now on to a presentation that Clerk Teske will provide regarding the April 7 elections. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to say, please be patient with me. Everything that I am about to say um, has to do with things that I've heard. So I'm trying to answer questions um, that I, you know, comments that I've seen in the media or whatever. So please bear with me, it's kind of long, but I just feel I need to say this. So I wanna say I'm sorry to anyone who didn't receive an absentee ballot. The clerk's office felt horrible and I will get into that later on um, with the court order. Um, we did everything that we could to get ballots out. We had, um, we were trying to get that done. We had to update the poll worker roster, um, respond to polling locations, pulling out. Um, our liquor license renewals are due now, licensing and campaign finance reporting. We received help with the daily receding phone calls, state reports that needed to be filed, committee and council agenda minutes and meetings, and we were very well supported by all departments, including police, fire, and transit. So we can't thank city staff enough for all the help that you gave us. So now some background information, things that um, I saw, you know, as far as the, the election being mismanaged. Um, I would like to talk about that comment um, that was brought forth by Sandy Juno, um, who has no idea how to run a polling location because that's not in her job description. Uh, the Brown County Clerk's Office programs the election, prints ballots, and uploads the results to their website on election night. Uh, I feel she's trying to deflect the issue that some of the people um, who requested ballots did not get them, but everyone in line at the polls voted, did get to vote. Unfortunately, the lines were long, and I think that had to do with not everyone getting an absentee ballot, and I'm sorry for that. Um, one alder person brought up the fact, why didn't we ask Brown County for help? We did. Um, the mayor, told me to call the Brown County Clerk's Office to see if they could give us any help um, because they are certified in the system to work in WIS vote, which feeds to my vote, is run by the Wisconsin Elections Commission. It is not the city of Green Bay. So we, I called over there to see if they could give us any help because one of their employees over there um, was capable of helping us because she had in the past. Um, so keep in mind that at this point, all the programming and the ballots were printed, which Brown County does, but that was in their print department. And I was told by the chief of staff that they could not, chief deputy, I apologize, could not help us. I asked about two of their employees, one who filled in in our office before, and I was told, no, they haven't worked in the system much. Um, and the other one, um, the other person was homesick. So then on Tuesday, March 31st, the county clerk sends over a person, which is the one that used to help us, which was fantastic. Um, that same week, the mayor decided to go down to two polling locations because of the shortage of poll workers. 
Keep in mind at this point, we did not know the National Guard would be deployed and trained. When Sandy heard the mayor was going down to two polling locations, she came over to Green Bay Clerk's office, brought her chief deputy and deputy along with her. And she said, you're only having two tabulators at the polls. And I said, yes. She said, well, what happens if it breaks down? And I said, I'll have a spare there. Um, and also if a machine jams or breaks down, there is the slot to open so the voter can put in their ballot securely. I said, um, on a normal election, there isn't a backup tabulator at each polling location, and there isn't an election text stationed at the polling site like I was having on April 7th. Usually, election texts are dispatched if there's an issue. Um, during a normal election, we have five tabulators for central count, which is held in the clerk's office and remaining at the polling locations. This election, we had four at the polling locations and the remaining for central count because the volume of absentees were so high. When she left, she didn't seem upset. She said she would be sending another one or two people over to help, and I thanked her. Um, she did send one person over, and that person was sick. So I didn't want her in the office with the coronavirus. I didn't know, so I sent her back. Um, and then um, Celestine, the chief of staff, talked to Sandy, and. Sandy said, well, we could have people work in our office. When I told Sandy that she would need dymo printers, they don't have any there, um, and Sandy wouldn't buy one. Well, Celestine realized she had one at her desk, and then I had one um, at one of the staff's desk in the, our clerk's office, so we sent those over there. Um, these are only the size of a Kleenex box, so they can just be carried over. Um, they took the printers, and when they, they came back later in the afternoon, and they said, we couldn't do anything. Our IT person didn't come and connect them. So they didn't, couldn't help at all um, over there. Um, let's see. Monday morning, I called her, um, the girl that was helping us when she left on that Friday, I, she said, call me Monday if, if you need me. And I said, well, I'll need you, but I'll call you Monday. So I called her and she told me she couldn't help on Monday, which was the day before the election because per the, per the law at the time, we could still get absentees out. I was told she couldn't help because she had to send out the National Guard. Um, so then, um, See. On Sunday, March 29th, I sent an email to the Wisconsin, Wisconsin Elections Commission asking for guidance on having city employees being able to access the system, and I never received a response back from them. That day that Sandy came over, she went right back. She called the WEC, and she was told that they needed to be trained with my assistance and then they could get a username and password. But Sandy said to me, you don't have to train them, just say they were trained. And I, I said, I'm not gonna do that because we do sign paperwork that we took the training and that what they're working with is confidential information. So now I'm gonna get to the absentee process um, I had called and left a message for the postmaster on March 12th to call me concerning the ballots, the absentee ballots. I asked if the absentee ballots could be kept in Green Bay the Friday before the election and not sent to Milwaukee or the Twin Cities to be sorted, and I never received a back. I thought at that time that it would help to keep the ballots here to get them to the voters sooner. Um, the clerk and so then the process now of absentee requests. But myself and the deputy clerk are the only ones that get notified of absentee requests. So that's through our email. Um, we also get notified by e um, an email set up for our office, which is absentee requests. And then under clerk's inquiries, we also get them there. And I also get them on my own email. 
Um, so when I quoted our request of 17,000 emails, now that's in a two and a half to three week period, 17,000 emails coming in, it was just so overwhelming. And the deputy clerk was printing them out, printing them out, and she just couldn't keep up. So um, I asked IT then if, well, I did ask the WEC, could we be doing this anyway quicker? They said, nope, what you're doing is the best way possible. So then we asked IT um, if they could help us. They did. They um, came up with a program that made it print faster. There was a few glitches in it, but I truly believe that that made things go faster to print out. Um, the only issue there was um, when I, I, I saw that we were just drowning, I said, can we have printing print them? So Erica down in printing printed them and she said that first day she said to Kim, the deputy clerk, she said, I did work all day. I just can't believe that they're coming in faster than I can print them out. So, and what we had to do in that case also is we couldn't have them directed to Erica. Um, the deputy clerk had to get her email over to the print department because all those emails coming in were starting to clog up the servers because photo ID was attached to most of them. Um, let's see. When it comes to absentee ballots, in the beginning of an election, we are given deadlines when the first batch has to be sent out. So that first batch went out on March 17th and it was over 2,000. That did include nursing homes because we could not send special voting deputies to the nursing homes. Uh, so, so that is a quicker process. The requests are in there already. So right now people are also asking for absentees for August and November, which is fantastic because if we can get them in that first batch, it goes quicker than doing them individually. Um, on, when I did ask um, the WEC then on Saturday, March 28th, if they came up with anything faster. Um, I did get a response and um, was told they did come up with a new report. And then I had another email explaining the report. And then another person from the WEC said, last I asked about sharing this, I was told to hold off because it may not have been working completely correctly. So, so we didn't go that route because we didn't know if we were going to get every single request because that would be huge if we missed one there. Um, once the labels are printed, um, which I did send you the um, screenshots of how to do that, and that is just for one person. So just to get a set of labels out for one person, it takes 18 clicks. That does not include um, putting the labels on the envelope or inserting the ballot and the instructions. So once the labels are printed, they're put on an envelope, the inside and outside envelope next to the correct ballot the, that has the correct ward number selected, folded and inserted into the envelope with directions. We had many devoted city staff that came in day after day and helped us label and insert ballots so the city clerks who office who were certified in the system would be able to continue on with labeling. The WEC system allows voters to request as many times as they want. We had one um, person request 11 times. 11 times we still have to print and touch that to make sure it's in there. Nothing tells us, oh, this person did that already. So. There's multiple requests. Um, some also sent um, their request to every email that we have. So with the size of Green Bay, there's no, no way that we could know who was asking multiple times. Um, we also have mail-in requests. So anyone that wants to send us a letter, they can mail it to us. 
Um, and what I did, and I, I'm not a fan of canned responses for email, but I had to. I had a canned reply to emails, which I hated doing, but I had to either answer emails or get as many absentee requests out as possible. If someone asked where their absentee request was, I would do a search to see if I had one, but didn't respond because I had the canned response asking for their patience. If I did see that there was an issue, then I, I would answer back saying, I don't see it. Um, some voters requested absentee ballots by city email and they didn't provide photo ID. So my canned response um, answered that and some didn't send anything back so I couldn't process their request. The clerk's office staff couldn't answer the phones anymore because we had over 200 phone calls coming in on one day. So here we have all the emails coming in and then all the phone calls. So we received help from other departments answering phones. Um, a couple of people argued with me that they didn't have to provide photo ID because Governor Evers said they only needed to provide name and address. So there's, there's a lot of information out there and some of it wasn't always correct. So um, I just wanna say I'm so proud of the staff in the clerk's office. They worked so hard to try and get a ballot to everyone. We had in-person absentee voting for 12 days at the transit station from 10 till two, but the Thursday and Friday before the election, it was 10 to five. Um, I am so thankful that um, director, he was allowed us in the dispatch area so the girls could be behind glass. And one voter actually got up and coughed all over the glass. So it was just good that they had that glass in between. On the last day, and this is just kind of a little side note that I, I want to tell you how devoted the girls are in the office. One of the girls fell the last day of in-person voting. She ended up in urgent care. Urgent care couldn't help her. She had to go to the emergency room. Her tendon was showing on her finger. She had nine stitches. She said to the doctor, please stitch my finger so that I can type labels this weekend so I can get these out. I can help get absentee ballots out to the people. She is that devoted. So her finger wasn't straight. It was crooked so she could type. Um, some of the girls in the beginning couldn't work at night. We didn't, there wasn't any extra laptops. As soon as IT got laptops in, they set them up and they took work home too for nights and weekends. Um, let's see, um, then when absentee ballots are returned, so as we're trying to get all these out, then we're getting them all back in, people were wondering, why isn't my ballot marked back in? Well, we didn't have time for that. Again, you have to be certified in the system to be able to do that. So when ballots are returned, they're logged in, which is a very quick process. Then they have to be put in ward order, then alphabetical order, and then open. Then two people, like at the polls on election day, take the ballot log, which is like a poll book. They state the person's name and address on the envelope. The workers give the person a number in the ballot log, and then the ballot is fed into the tabulator. At the end, the last number on the ballot log should match the number on the tabulator. This is done for each individual envelope and we had almost 12,000 returned. As far as um, poll workers, Alder Weary, you asked to be a poll worker and I stated you were on the ballot so you couldn't, but I was thankful you asked. Finally, I was told that I could assign you at East High to help with disinfecting. The night before the election, you emailed me on my work computer at 8.24 p.m. to tell me you won't be in until 2.30 on election day and that you're sending someone else, which was very nice you tried to cover, but if you would have been a poll worker, that would have been very upsetting to a chief inspector. If and I were a poll worker, I would have been there all day. Then, um, and as we found out from the state- Because they are the ones that are in charge on Alder, election Alder, day. Now. Listen, when there's something Please, incorrect, I, I need Alder, to- Alder, you're out of order. I just point of order, order then. Point of order. 
The state right. did come back and say we can be poll workers as long as it's not in our own uh, district. So that that just needs to be corrected. We can no. be. No, I have that right from the Wisconsin Elections Commission. So if you want to see that, you can. Okay, and I guess you can. Attorney Chavez has, was about has the floor. Clerk Teske, proceed. I'm sorry, Mayor. Did did um, Attorney Chavez want to speak on that? Sure. Um, I reached out to the WEC because we had received conflicting information. They said that it is common for people to receive conflicting information depending on who asked at the WEC. They stated that they will be providing additional guidance in the future, but that their recommendation is still to um, allow alders, um, or I shouldn't say alders, anybody who's currently on a ballot can work an election, just not an election that they're in. So any other district? No, um, if they're on the, yes. on the ballot. I think you're incorrect. I think we need to get information on that. As, as Attorney Chavez stated, there's some uh, mixed messages. So All right. Clerk Teske, proceed. Thank you. So the chief inspectors are the ones that are in charge on election day at their polling location. Fortunately, I knew the person um, that was replacing you and was okay with it. Um, but just to note that on a, a normal election, there are laws as to who can be at the polls and um, they have to be from the county that, that they're working in. Um, let's see. Thank God he was there. The clerk's office um, has the interest of all citizens in mind just as much as you do. Our job is to make sure everyone has equal access to the ballot. And this time we were forced by the court to stop filling absentee requests, which we feel so sorry about that. Um, I also heard it was being said that we didn't have any backup at the polls for poll workers. There were backups. And when the chief inspectors realized that they needed more tables opened, that is when the backups were used. This happens all the time. People don't realize how dedicated these workers are. They normally eat meals as they are working, but I told them this time they shouldn't eat at the table because of the coronavirus. Polling locations. The city of Green Bay doesn't have community centers like other municipalities, so we are not able to make spur of the moment changes. Polling locations need to be ADA compliant, our big, biggest polling location is UWGB, and we weren't allowed to use their facility this time. Some polling locations we have are in small rooms and are ADA compliant on a normal election, but when there is six, the social distancing is six feet apart, we couldn't use some of those rooms. Some, lo some polling locations are interior rooms where voters have to use the same door to go in and out in the hallway. So again, social distancing would be a problem. The high school gyms had outside doors that could be open and people could come in one door and go out the other. The WEC knew a week ahead of time that this is what we were doing. The city of Green Bay also always has curbside voting. I had told the chief inspectors to brush up on the rules because I thought we would have more this time. In the 15 years that I have worked on elections, eight as clerk, we have never had people call for an appointment for curbside voting. Our process has always been have someone come along and they can stand in line for you and when they get to the front of the line you can say they have someone who needs to vote in the car and two poll workers will go out. It's unfortunate that Sandy Juno didn't ask ahead of time if it was our process and said she caused more confusion. As soon as I heard there might be an issue with curbside voting I contacted the chief of staff who coordinated staff at the door and she went right over to clarify what our process was. One woman got out of her car to talk to the chief inspector, chief inspector and said she wanted to curbside vote because she thought she could go to the front of the line. We told her that we would get her a chair and um, when it was her turn to, to vote, she could walk up to the poll books. She wasn't happy about that. I did receive emails asking about curbside voting on election day. As soon as I saw them, I called the person to explain the process if they stated they were alone, I set a time for them to go and the poll workers would be out there to assist. And this voter was very happy. Another one called, called in the process and he just argued with me that I was disenfranchising him 
when I was asking him what time he wanted to make an appointment and he hung up on me. So some, and some won't even respond to my emails. Curbside voting is defined as a voter who cannot enter the absentee voting location or polling place due to a disability. One of the big confusions at this election we have had drive up voting, which we don't. We didn't have drive up voting. Um, then uh, when the mayor decided to have two polling locations, it um, became obvious um, that we, we would have enough qualified, experienced poll workers. I didn't have time to train anybody new. It was either keep printing labels to get absentee ballot requests out or train people. We didn't know at, at the time the National Guard was going to be trained. And I have an email here um, and this is what I was afraid of. And this came, um, this went to Sandy Juno from the Wisconsin Elections Commission and says, good morning. And this was, I just wanted to say Monday, April 6th at 9.36 in the morning. And the WEC said the deployment came together very quickly. So we know there have been some mix ups. For example, some guard people showed up very early this morning and it seems some missed the training yesterday. Also, some counties have too many and some not enough. When I came to work um, that morning uh, of the election, um, there was a girl outside waiting and she was from the National Guard. And I said, you were assigned to the city of Green Bay? And she said, yes. So I thanked her and I sent her over to West High School where she worked um, and did a great job. So I didn't turn anyone away, but um, I was afraid that they would not be trained properly. Um, because even though some people think you can just plop a person in the chair in front of a poll book, it's not that easy. If you go out to the website, which I will give you later for training for poll workers, just to have a person sit at the poll book is a 10 page training manual, 10 pages. So, um, um, you know, everything can look good on paper until it doesn't work out that way. And that, that's usually what happens. Um, the WEC, I think they are just understaffed also um, because when we ask for things to be corrected or updated, they'll say in a couple weeks, one of them that was huge to us took a year and a half. So even though I appreciate them trying to get the National Guard out, I, I was hesitant about that. Um, and I've had other clerks in Brown County tell me the same thing, they had the same concerns. So, and then in response to people accusing the mayor of wasting his time on a loss, he did that because he, we could see the train wreck coming, that people would not, not every person would be able to get the ballot. Because they kept telling him, we have this many in the queue, we have this many to do, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger. Um, and as that was happening, the, the poll workers were pulling out, polling locations were pulling out, um, and he didn't ask for it to be canceled. He just asked for it to be extended. He wanted to make sure everyone could vote. The mayor also wanted to make sure poll workers and citizens were protected from the coronavirus as much as possible, but he wanted to limit the number exposed. I, I believe if voters had gotten their absentee ballot in the mail, which was denied by the court, they wouldn't have been standing in line, which would have reduced the number at the polls. We can usually tell by um, people walk um, in person voting the two and a half weeks or two weeks ahead. We can usually tell how busy an election day is going to be. So um, the other thing I wanted to say as far as training, um, when you're at poll books, balancing poll books to the machine can be very tricky to even an experienced poll worker. So if we have two poll workers um, putting the numbers in, that, those two books that exact. And then that has to match to the machine. With this election, no matter how it would have been done, because we couldn't use our polling locations, multiple wards had to be in, one lo in each location. 
So that meant that on one side, they had 23 poll books. On the other side, they had 24 poll books. So instead of just walking up to the table and they're sitting there with the poll book, person had to go up, tell them what ward they were in. Then they, the poll workers had to pull the book with the checkoff number sheet, give them a number, put their number by their name, give them the proper ballot, which again, there would have been 23 different ballots or 24, and then have them go on to vote. Then the poll workers would take that bundle, put it back in the folder so that the next person that came up received the correct poll book. So that takes talent, I'm sorry. Um, you know, and our numbers are looking pretty good. Um, I didn't want to be, you know, accused of our, our election not being balanced because we can't close out an election with the Wisconsin Election Commission unless our numbers balance. So I just wanted to make that clear. And by all means, if anybody has any questions, just call me or email me and I will explain it better. Or you can go to the WEC and see all their manuals. Um, so just kind of in conclusion, but then I also have some questions that were asked by aldermen that I will answer. Um, so we had in-person voting for a little over two weeks with hardly any lines. The city was not the ones that disenfranchised the voters. It was the parties that opposed either extending the time to get absentee ballots mailed and returned or postponing the election. The clerk's office is always open for you to come in and ask questions or discuss things. I actually didn't hear from anyone. Um, I had some alders call with encouraging words. I did have Alder Weary the Saturday before the election come knocking on my window and telling me I'm doing a good job. Um, I take my job very serious. And again, it's to make sure that everyone has equal access to the, the ballot and the city fought really hard to make sure we could do that, but we weren't given that opportunity. And I'm, I feel horrible that people could not get their vote in. Going forward, the clerk's office will need more people who are certified in the WISPO system and we are talking, we're in discussion on that. Um, and hopefully the WEC will update the system to make it faster to produce um, an absentee ballot, which it wasn't before they did their upgrade. Um, this is more steps. Um, so we are looking to move forward now and um, see what we can do to make sure that we have enough people to get through since we can plan now. We didn't have that opportunity with this election. Um, so I guess my question now is, um, Alder Stoyer, you had given me a page of questions. Should I answer, give those answers now or would you like me to wait? Mm -hmm. We can talk about a few things, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. First one was how many voters ended up voting at East High? It was 1,338. West High was 1,320. Your second question, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., that would be, that would have averaged out to 0.6 voters per, per minute that voted. If you extended the original 13 hours to 17.5 hours for the overflow, overflow voters, who were in line at 8 p.m., it would almost be 0.8 voters per minute. How could this have been improved? For one thing, not, not every voter is the same. Um, some might need to register filling out a form, showing proof of residence. Some people come prepared. Some poll workers go through, have to go through a list of the proof of residence that we accept, and that's by law. Um, and some say they didn't bring anything, and then the poll worker goes through, okay, do you have anything on your phone that you could use? Um, then the person has to show their photo ID to get the ballot. People and poll workers, it's, it's not a machine on a conveyor belt. Every, you know, there's different situations. Um, how many voting machines were at East, at West? Um, and I answered that in, in my, my talk. Polls were open from 7 to 8 p.m. There were 31 polling stations in Green Bay. 
yes, but not all polling locations wanted us in the building. I kind of went through that. I will tell you that UWGB had three wards. We couldn't be there. Atonement Lutheran, two wards. Fire Station, number five, two wards. Union Congregational Church, one ward. Our Savior Lutheran, one ward. Bethel Evangelical Lutheran Church, one ward. St. Elizabeth Seton Church, two wards. And Botanical Gardens, one ward. That was a total of 13 wards that didn't have a home. Three polling locations were maybe. That was Salvation Army, one ward. First Presbyterian Church, two wards. And St. Paul's Methodist, one ward. So that added up to four wards. So that was 17 wards that we didn't have a place for them to be, not including the ones that I stated before that maybe want to fit into the social distancing um, laws, rules. You said people are still waiting outside at 8 p.m. to vote. I said yes at both places. The law states anyone in line to vote at 8 p.m. are allowed to vote no matter how long it takes. Everyone, every person that decided to stand in line did vote. Um, you asked the last voter at East High. It was around 11.30. West High was around 12.30. Um, you asked how many registered voters in the city of Green Bay. At the time that I was looking this up, it was 52,130. That number changes daily. <clears throat> we had 14,000, um, you said 14,376 absentee ballots were sent out from the Green Bay Clerk's Office starting when? That was in the beginning on March 17th um, that we mailed those out. We had gotten the ballots like maybe the 15th or 16th, and, and we have the envelopes ready and ready to go just to stuff the ballots. Uh, you said given that Governor Evers wanted to delay the election until June 9th, 2020, maintains that they could have processed the nearly 38,000 remaining voters in time to have the election as an absentee ballot only election. My response to that is we're hoping that if it came to that, the WEC would have been able to do some things behind the scenes to allow us to grab all remaining registered voters that didn't have a request on file. The way we would do it now is each request gets printed out individually after that last initial bunch batch. We had more absentee ballots coming in than we could print out. And I did explain that I called the WEC. Each, um, you said each ballot takes five minutes to process with a minimum six touches by a clerk to complete that. That comes to a total of 1,198 man hours for the 14,376 absentee, absentee ballots that were handled all without a break. My response, each individual request takes approximately five minutes if a person is proficient along with being certified in the WISVOD system. A person has to take hours of training to get certified to use the system. Once certified, the WEC issues a username and password with a blue fob key for security. And as far as training goes, um, I do have, a lot of this can be found at the WEC. Um, there's different levels of certification um, in the WISFOLD system. There's some for clerks, just data entry, um, some to just view. Um, I, I mean, I could, I could go on and on. Um, poll worker training, that um, under the WEC for training, Wisconsin statutes require that all election inspectors are, receive training at least once every two years. The municipal clerk will provide this training and should document that the inspectors have been trained. And I do have a huge spreadsheet of all the, the hours they train. Um, Currently, there's no specific prescribed curriculum or length of training provided by the election division. Um, at a minimum, election inspectors be instructed on the duties detailed in the election day manual, which I sent you the link to that. And it's the responsibility of the municipal clerk to ensure that election inspectors have received sufficient training. Um, okay, so let's see, when I talked about the five minutes to process. I had already gone through the, the, the steps to get an absentee ballot out. You asked how much does an absentee ballot cost in materials and postage? Who in the end is paying for all this? What budget deal with this? 
The outer envelope is eight cents. Inner envelope is eight cents. Two labels comes to 12 cents. Ballot is 40 cents. Postage is 38 to mail it to the voter. We get a break because we have a service. 50 cents to have the voter mail it back. So it's a total of a dollar 56 cents each um, per absentee ballot. It comes out of the election budget that you approve in the fall. For mail-in ballots, a minimum of 32 clicks is needed to process the application, and I already answered that. Clerk maintains that given a few extra days that they would have processed the nearly 3,000 absentee ballots that remained, which in effect would have made the in-person election a moot point. I don't believe it would have completely ended the lines, but it sure would have helped them. Um, so on April 2nd, 2020, in the evening, Judge Conley of the federal court had issued an order related to absentee ballot for the next week's election. The court ordered the following. A deadline for the receipt of absentee ballots is extended to 4 p.m. on Monday, April 13th. The court specifically did not add a requirement for a postmark by deadline as long as the ballot is returned by the new deadline. So what that meant was we thought by Wednesday, we would have had them all out, which would have been the 8th. On the 6th, um, at about 6.30, we were all working at home on labels, and we heard that it was overturned. We were told just to stop processing labels. So that's the reason why everyone they added a day, they added Friday for people to request, and yet they cut us short on getting them back. That for us to get them out, for them to get back. So um, that was our issue on the absentee ballots. Um, can we decipher the breakdown of the 1,198 man hours as to what was performed by clerk inspection cards? Um, and I'm just not quite sure where you got that number. Um, every department helped. I also have the time, um, Diana in finance, the finance director, she put together, um, but it was self-reported. And the break, um, to break it down, there's 1,658 hours that other city staff helped us number of employees that assisted were 86. Um, estimated assistance per employee was 19.3 hours. Uh, the clerk's office had, um, and like I said, for some of them, um, it was not as much because they didn't have the opportunity with a laptop at home. Um, the breakdown for that is um, 33 hours of overtime by one of the clerk staff. Another had 14.75. And keep in mind, this had some of this had to do with the coronavirus also because some have children at home and they have no daycare. Another one had 35 hours. I had 130, 136 hours of overtime and the deputy clerk had 64 hours of overtime. We were working nights, weekends. Um, like one of the Madison clerks said, you end up blazing over because you are just so exhausted. Uh, let's see. In a typical spring election, what are the totals for in-house voters for absentees? You asked for 2016 and 2018. I can actually give you the numbers for um, the last four years. 2016 at the polls was 28,630 absentee ballots, 2,778. 2017 at the polls, 10,212 absentee, 1,314. 2018, 11,789 at the polls, 1,752 absentee. And in 2019, we had 17,559 absentees was 2,488. This election at the polls, 2,658 absentees, 11,931 were returned. So you can see where it was a total flip-flop. 
in your, in your estimation, what were the factors that caused the largest increase? Um, I, again, I think it was because they couldn't return their, they didn't get the ballot and some decided to go to the polls. Uh, we talked about the poll worker training. Um, you asked about the National Guard assisting the election in Appleton. It seemed to be fairly organized event. Why was the National Guard not utilized in Green Bay? Um, I talked about the National Guard and why we didn't use them, but I don't have the facts on Appleton. Um, and something that will never be is how all these places balance, if they balance their election. To me, that's huge. Um, you said there were no bathrooms outside as folks waited two to four hours in line. Was this an oversight? We were in a coronavirus pandemic, just like we are now. And I don't know if we would have been allowed to use porta potties. Um, if someone had to use the bathroom, they could have gone up to the person manning the door and told them they needed to use the bathroom. The door person would have accom made accommodations for social, social distancing at that point. You said Sandy Juno said the election issues in Green Bay were not related to COVID-19 as much as it was in efficiency. She stated that the National Guard was trained and ready to go. Well, I talked about that already and I actually have that e email that she received and they weren't all trained. Mm -hmm. um, could not the National Guard have viewed training videos weeks ago so that, so that if they were deployed to the election site, that they would have been up to speed. Well, like I stated before, we weren't aware of the National Guard until Sunday, April 5th. You would have to ask the state why they weren't trained sooner. Another clerk, like I said, she had the same concerns as I did. Are there jurisdictions in Wisconsin that can email your absentee ballot to you since the original form says that that is possible? The law states absentee ballots may be emailed, but the city of Green Bay only does overseas and military voters. The reason for this is it's a complicated process for people to get right. Very few do it correctly. Um, once the ballot is mailed to us, mailed back, we have to recreate that ballot. So in my mind, that's another room for error by us recreating. And can you imagine if all those 12,000 people that got absentee ballots were emailed and we would have to remake 12,000 ballots on election day? There's no way we could do it. Just no way. And it's not as easy as just copying it over. Two people have to step aside. They have to copy that. You have to mark the one ballot, the original as one, the recreated one as one, has to be initialed, has to be written in the inspector statement. A lot to that. Um, let's see. So some people did email on um, election day and asked for that since they didn't receive their ballot and I had to tell them no because once it was requested a certain way they could not ask for it email and that was per the WEC. You said perception in the community centered on the fact that there didn't seem to be a plan B or plan C, explain. We were in, we're in this pandemic and I, don't, I, I guess I don't understand what people thought we could do. Um, the chief inspectors did everything they could. They asked for more tables. They divided up the poll books in wards more, but we only had so many sneeze and cough guards. There was one group at East that decided they didn't, they were okay with not a sneeze cough guard, which I wasn't thrilled with, but it was, they made that decision. West High, they all wanted to be behind those, those guards, which I totally understand. So I think Alder Stoyer, that answers all your questions. I can't I, hear anybody. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I'll just, no, just, just one second. I'm sorry. I'll just start. Clerk Teske, just finish up your presentation and then we'll move on to questions because we do have somebody else in the queue. Okay. okay. 
Um, let's see. I'm just not sure I covered. I'm. But that's fine. I'm good with that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Thanks again for your work, the work of your staff, and, and the work of our, our poll workers. Um, Alder Weary. Mr. Mayor, thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, I could tell when I knocked on the window, you kind of gave me that glazed over look, so I could tell at that point you were pretending. Uh, a lot of information, and I know this will be going to a committee anyway next week, so some of it we can parse at that time. Um, now, I, I fully expected, as did, I'm thinking, uh, most of the council written report. Um, why wasn't there one? Because that, that was a lot of information, and sometimes you're you might cut in and out, so we heard part of it. The reason why is because it's a lot of information. I could go on and on and on, at digging even deeper into all this. Elections are not easy. So I hit on the highlights, things that um, I received emails on, questions on, um, hearing about the National Guard. Um, you know, if you want me to get in deeper into the election as to how it works, I can do that, but that would be, I mean, you might as well go to the WEC and look at all the manuals then. I mean, if you have questions, by all means, ask me. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Well, and uh, I, obviously I do have a request going to protection and policy next week. Um, strangely, and I didn't really get a great answer, that committee never met last week, so we can't discuss that item. And when I asked for it to be put on as a committee of the whole because they didn't meet, that didn't happen also. So um, my request for this to be looked into by the Wisconsin's Election Commission will be discussed next week at Protection and Policy. So if people have some detailed questions, we can hold off till then. Uh, Chris, um, who has the final say on election issues? Is it is it you or the mayor? I mean... The mayor and I, Celestine and Vanessa, would have meetings every morning. We updated each other on what was going on. Um, the best decisions were made at the time, which was changing pretty much hourly. That didn't answer my question, though. I appreciate it. That's a nice answer. But uh, who has the final say? Is it you or the mayor? As far as the polling Who's location? Who's in charge of the election? Who makes the final call? Who makes the final call on something to go down to polling places or to not take volunteers or not take the National Guard? Is that you? Or can you be overridden by the mayor? Or who makes that call? Alder Weary, you know, I, I don't think there was a situation where there was any overriding going on. I, I talked about the decision points as I saw them, um, decisions made because of I the just want to know who makes the call. Because of the That's radical all. reduction who makes the call? that we experienced. It's a collaborative process. Uh, obviously, Clerk Teske is the, the chief election administrator here in the city of Green Bay. Um, but Where the, does the buck the, stop, the, Mr. Mayor? The dialogue that exists Somebody's between make the, call. the clerk's office and, uh, and the mayor's office is, is very similar to the exchanges that always go on with our department heads and senior staff here in the city. So I've, I've taken full ownership. So who makes I, I'm not. I'm not sure exactly what so you're asking. Make, I, I've taken full ownership. I want to know who makes the, the final call and the decisions that were made. I've taken that responsibility. I'm not debating you, and I was asking the clerk. So, I'm gonna. I'm gonna re-ask the clerk that question. Um, Chris, if you had something you felt strongly on, could you have enforced that? Could you have said, "No, we're gonna have four polling places like we originally said, all four high schools"? Could you have demanded that? Actually, that, that is a scenario that played out um, when the mayor um, decided to go with the two gyms. I, I thought, okay, and my brain started working, thinking what plan, and I said, okay, we'll have tables for each ward. And at that time then he said, wait a minute, he said, that's too many people in there. And I thought, good point, good point. So he was following what was given to us by the WEC. Other, other entities wouldn't answer what was the safest layout. So what he was doing was following the high school having a door in, a different door out, um, the least amount of people in. And I got what he was doing. Wouldn't it make more sense to have more smaller lines, people in and out? 
then you're putting everybody in two you're exposing more people okay now think about that for a second you're taking a thousand people I and have, putting them I, I at have. east or west <laughs> they were I mean, outside okay, i was there were, nine hours i saw them congested alder weary i'm we just, need to, I'm just we need to maintain some order here so it's a question and an answer it's not a running dialogue okay so here's here it is if we would have had multiple polling locations that would have been more people running the election with the same amount of people coming in which is more people by having it at the high school they were outside six feet apart let in by someone at the door so it's the same poll workers not as many poll workers and the same amount of people. So in my mind, I understood exactly what he was saying. And if you read all the different communications from the WEC, that's what he was trying to follow. And hindsight is 2020. So it might look easy for you to say that, but that isn't, if you actually look at the plan, that was the better option for less people to be infected chance of infection well i'm i'm curious how could madison appleton racine sheboygan schwabin and Pierre, everybody else around the state except milwaukee have no issues and have very short wait times i'd like to they know where you're uh, volunteers i i spoke to an alderman in sheboygan they reached out to high school seniors to people coming back from college i know political parties and how we turned them down so and again, I want to again, Alder Weary, I've already addressed that. I addressed that last week in my report to council. You didn't want to put them at risk. Even though Correct. they're volunteering, they're saying, hey, this is going to help our community, and I don't care if I'm at risk. Well, that, that's a separate issue about volunteers. The volunteers were put to use. I, as I stated last week, or at our last meeting, rather, I was not comfortable actively recruiting people into an unsafe process, which is what the election was. I was even not all the rest comfortable. Of the state did. Even all though the weary, rest of the state did. All the weary. I was not comfortable <laughs> pressing employee, city employees into service yeah. in this environment. The rest either. of the state was, but Mayor. Right, yeah. And, and you know, so, you know, we can this was a major, compare and, this, and learn some things there, absolutely. Also, well, um, Madison I just took, what, to... 10, 15 minutes to vote? I think Madison was 10, 15 minutes to vote, and they have way more people than we do. Um, and I, I just really I, think we need a fully, well, hold on. I, I think we need, a, we need a really transparent report and timeline on communications and decisions made. We owe that to the people who couldn't vote. We all heard from them and everybody in there who's shaking their head no. We heard from them. I heard from people who didn't vote the first time ever, 50, 60 years. They couldn't stand in line for four hours. Our decisions to put it into two polling locations caused that. So blame it on the state, blame it on whoever you want. Our decisions took a bad situation and made it far, far worse, horribly worse. And the buck has to stop somewhere. And if it's just you, Mr. Mayor, well, I, fine. I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how, I don't know how many times I can, you. I don't know how many times I can own it or accept the buck, Alder Weary, but I That's have. That's great, you can own it. I'm just telling you the frustration and anger that's out there. You can sidestep it and you know, hide. And <laughs> I don't know if you sidestep in what, Alder? I've been very transparent. What what are the repercussions? The accountability. If this were a private company, there would be people gone. Do you Can have a I question? Speak, Mayor? Yeah, go ahead, Cortesky. Um, I just want to state I also have people that I talk to. Um, evidently, in Ashwabanan, they weren't even allowed to ask. The high school students to work because they didn't feel it was safe. So it's everyone's opinion as to what was safe and what wasn't. And um, I, I guess I'd like to know, Alder Weary, where you're getting the information that everything was hunky dory every place else because I'm not hearing that. I heard Madison. As compared to four hour waits? As, a pay, as opposed to three and four hour waits, I would say it was hunky dory, except for Milwaukee. They're always a mess, though. But again, well, I, I can have say heard, most of this can for I finish, our, you know, please? Committees, but. Again, I have heard from many people that they are thankful for what we did. 
I have received flowers. I've received beautiful thank you, handmade thank you notes, wonderful emails of support. So there's two sides to all of it. And a lot of people that have emailed me ask, asking me why they didn't receive a ballot. I explained to them, even though it, it was disappointing to them, they didn't vote, they understood. So, you know, I, I guess I, I'd like to know, because I'd like to talk to those people then, how it went so well, because I'm, that's not what I'm hearing. I, I think, um, I really think we did an excellent job. If we could have got maps and T ballots out, which we couldn't, yeah. the lines would have been. Excellent job. I wouldn't further, use excellent. In, any further in, questions, in Alder Weary? Do you have further questions, Alder Weary? Uh, no, my last. Uh... All right, thank you, Alder. Uh, nobody else is in the queue here. Press your buttons. If you haven't, Alder Dorf, looks like you're interested in speaking. Mayor, Alder Vanderlees has his hand up. Alder Dorf, go ahead. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm confused as to what Alder Weary was trying to get at, like someone needs to be punished. Um, I, I don't understand that point of view. But what I do wanna say is uh, thank you so much um, Clerk Teske for putting this report together. It obviously took you hours and hours and hours. You went through a really rough election that took you hours and hours and hours. You haven't been able to get much sleep. This is a lot hanging over you. And I want you to know that I support you. I support what we did as a city. I support the decision not to ask volunteers or to press people, I'm sorry, to press people into working from the city in a dangerous situation. Um, we did the best we could. This is a national crisis. There hasn't been a COVID-19 before. 1918, there was the Spanish flu. This has never happened before. For, for someone to get a punishment, it seems like it would have been purposely done. We would purposely have set out to disenfranchise voters purposely not made good decisions that's not what i'm hearing i'm hearing we found out about the national guard at the 11th hour now tell me here it is sunday night monday is the day before the election how do you let people know if you're going to open up more election sites you, you you would have people going to what they thought was the election site, which was East or West, and then what, stand in line and be told, oh, oh no, 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 we changed that. You, you have to go to Preble now, even though you've been standing here two hours. It's in, It would be impossible. You don't plan an election the day before an election. So we didn't get the... Um, the help from the network word if we're still in this situation August or in November. Can you hear me? In August yes. or in November, then we know that the National Guard would be available and we make different decisions. We only had a limited amount of information. No one purposely said, let's just make this worse. Nobody did. Everybody did the best job they could, and they tried the best that they could. And I applaud your efforts, and I want to thank you so much. That's all. Thank Thanks, you. Alder. Uh, Alder Stoyer. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, like I said, Chris, you know, I came in and asked a lot of those questions, and it, you know, they weren't, a lot of it was for information. You know, we, I was just trying to grasp it because let's face it, you know, we, we each represent 8,700 constituents and they all, and people had questions. I, I even um, emailed 55 of my citizens and I got 35 callbacks and many, you know, you'd probably like to read some of these, but I'm not gonna go through all of them. It, you know, I think people were frustrated. You know, I think the fact you were behind the scenes, one of the things, the problem you know, we couldn't get through to your office because you were inundated. So there were times where we needed to ask some questions and we, 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 were, we couldn't because you were so busy. So I understand that whole dynamic. Um, 
I think most of the people that I interviewed or talked to, they said that they really needed uh, what they came out with the election was that they needed two more polling places and waiting in line caused health concerns. That was about 50% of the people. That was the big worry that they had. Most 71% of the people of the 35 that replied <clears throat> said the election should have been delayed. And 74% said that the National Guard should have been called. So, and you've already talked about the National Guard, so I understand that. But I'm just letting you know that, you know, we as alders still get a lot of uh, feedback from people. I mean, there's some people, and I, I tried to interview people that were Republican, Democrat, Independent, and apolitical, so it didn't really matter. I think it's important to at least listen to the people. Um, Moving forward, um, I know you you did a, as well a, a good as, of a job as you could. I, I respect you and your position very much. But like I said, uh, the citizens were asking questions and, and we just needed to kind of try to address those as best as possible. People want to be heard, that's all. They want to be heard. And like all the worries said that many there were folks that could not vote because they were older and they just couldn't vote at all. So that, that was tough. So am I putting blame? I, you know what, I had folk blaming everybody from the mayor to the Supreme Court to the city clerk. Some people said there's no blame. People blamed the governor, the Wisconsin legislature. Everybody was to blame. Nobody had, some had no opinions. Some blamed the council and some blamed, blamed the media. So I really didn't get a good handle as far as a concentrated vote or what, what, what happened. So I just got a lot of information from a lot of people, and that's it. And I, I'm just saying, I find that you did a, as well a job as you could. It was disappointing under the circumstances, but I am I am not here to point any fingers. I just asked a lot of questions because a lot of people were asking, and I just needed to know as much oh. as I could. So, you know, if this does go to protection and policy, I will listen to that. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I did everything I could to, with the citizens. So I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Uh, Alder Vanderleest. Not sure if you're muted on another device there, uh, Alder. Okay, Mayor. Uh, my, my thoughts are on, on the, moving forward on, on the next elections coming up. Can you hear me now, Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and the next elections coming up that we, we get the, you know, the, the proper resources to, to do the job. Uh, the citizens of Green Bay, I know a lot of them were disappointed that they weren't able to vote. I had a lot of people in my district that, uh, you know, mentioned to me that, you know, they hadn't voted, you know, first time they hadn't voted in 60 years. So my thoughts are on moving forward. I know we've had a, a rough election this last election period here, but on moving forward, I, I think we have to have the resources and we have to have uh, a good plan going forward. You know, if we got to seek help other places, you know, we should do it. And, uh, you know, we overtaxed the people that were in the, in the office there, in the clerk's office. We didn't have enough personnel there to get the job done. And, and that's, and, and the thing is that we didn't have a good result on the election itself. So my, my thoughts are that as we move forward to the next election that we got all the T's and I's crossed and dotted so that, you know, people are going to be saying, gee, this went a lot better this next election. So we, we have an election in August and we got one in November. So uh, I hope we can get some good input as far as how we can get the job done and that, that people will be very, very happy about the, the next election coming up. And I, I thank all the people that, you know, came out to vote and uh, the ones that weren't able to vote, we're going to do better the next time around. And I, I just hope we can do that as a city and, and uh, learn from what we went through this last election. And I, I know that as far as uh, people that were, you know, wanted to vote, uh, you know, curbside, uh, we, we've got to find a good plan that, you know, people don't have to wait that long. And hopefully we can have the polls open this next time. I, I believe that, you know, having the polls open and, and you know, the absentee ballots, it's, it overwhelmed the whole the whole area as far as, you know, City of Green Bay. So I just hope that we can move forward and, and, and do a good job in the next two elections here and this, for this coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any response, Clerk Teske? 
no, that that is our plan is to, you know, move forward now, um, kind of planning maybe for the August to be like the April election and what can we do to improve, um, you know, with more staff. Thank right. you. Absolutely. Alder Lefebvre. Alder Lefebvre. Sorry. Sorry, my button's here. Um, yes, this is Alder Lefebvre. Um, I just want to say that um, Chris Teske and her staff, uh, by her report, it sounds like they really worked and worked to try to get something um, halfway decent. And it was just a perfect storm. It seemed like everything just happened almost beyond their control. And so I will not blame them at all. I don't, I don't think we need to be doing any blaming right now of anybody. I think what we need to do is work forward. And um, um, I do have some suggestions that I think I will email uh, Chris on that, and I will make some suggestions that I think that would work for the uh, future. If we are in this pandemic again, um, if it extends till this uh, fall election. So um, I think I will do that. But I just want to say that I think that um, the ones that worked on this, they put a lot of time in, and they really wanted something to work, and they tried. <clears throat> so I just wanted to thank them for all their hours and their time. Thank you. Thanks, thank Alder. you. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think... Chris, I just have a number of questions. I'm going to just do rapid fire. I mean, my intent right now is to maybe do some information gathering, and I'm going to kind of save, since there's not a motion on the floor, I'm just going to save, you know, any judgments or pontificating until such a time that that occurs. But, um, but one thing I do want to say is I don't think anybody's questioning, uh, and I certainly hope not, questioning the level of effort um, that you and your team had put in, because I think what you guys did was was absolutely remarkable. So I, I think some of the questions I have, though, are related a little bit more around uh, the planning and, and execution, the sort of uh, work smarter, not harder concept, if you will. Uh, because really, at the end of the day, what I want to see is how do we make corrections moving forward? Um, you talked about um, the need for individuals to be certified to work in the system. Could you please elaborate on who is certified, how many people are certified, and what it takes to train more people to be certified? Sure. Let me just get to my, my tab on that, please. Right now, um, we have the five of us in the clerk's office certified. So, um, I'm going to read to you what I had, what I put together on training. Um, below is a description of WISVOTE, which is the database for the Wisconsin Elections Commission, and the training needed. WISVOTE is a web-based voter registration application system that is accessed directly from an internet browser. WISVOTE credentials are required to access the WISVOTE system. Um, it goes into the licensing and everything. It says um, the WEC asks that WISVOTE users work on only one computer, um, and we do have to have on the computers a certain um, security on it. Um, Mike from IT took care of that. He could talk more on that. Um, but the clerk, this role requires <clears throat> complete WISVOTE training in the certification program. Users will receive training on almost all topics related to administering election. Absentee training is optional. Data entry. This role requires limited training in the general certification program. Users will be certified to enter voter registration applications, record voter participation, and track absentee ballots. The WEDC's data entry. This role requires no WISFO training, but the user must sign a confidentiality agreement, and the clerk must submit a request to the to add authorized users agreement in order to obtain the correct permissions. Users can view their municipal data in WISVOTE and have permissions to add, delete, or modify information only on the election statistics related reports, which like EDR, postcard report, inspector statement, elect an election reconciliation form. Then there's also a read only. 
Um, new WISFOLT users will receive WISFOLT credentials by following the WEC's online training and certification program. Um, to request election training, PLC access, send an email, a complete and signed copy of a request to add, um, identify the role type for each user identified on the form, um, and then it talks about getting us a password. Um, take election training. Um, training is through, um, after you get your, your login and password, you are allowed access to the Wisconsin elections training website to allow for new users to complete the required training. So there is a, a curriculum checklist that they have to go through and do these webinars within the system. And, and um, Clark, so it, I mean, really maybe to get at the heart of what I'm asking here, and I appreciate that, that in-depth response, but it sounds like we basically have five people in our office right now that are trained to have access at those various levels. Correct. Would that be, and so would that be an area that we could perhaps explore as getting additional individuals trained as backups so that if there is a higher volume that we could respond to it more aggressively? That's what we're looking at. And I did have some planned for this year because of the presidential, but because of the coronavirus, they declined to come in and work, which I totally understood. Otherwise I would have brought them in. Um, but we are looking at other options um, within the city to have people trained, which would be fantastic. Okay. If I could just interject Alder Johnson, I would totally agree with um, with the implication of your question. Um, and as Clerk Teske has suggested, it's something that we've already talked about, talked with uh, Human Resources Director Joe Falds about that, um, Director Ellen Becker as well, since she uh, supervises Chris. You know, the city election is one of the fundamental duties of city government. And I, I believe, you know, we all need to be really mission focused on, on making sure that we carry elections out successfully. Um, as others have suggested, Alder Vanderleest, uh, in particular, the office itself was overtaxed, was overburdened, and um, and we need to be prepared for that scenario to play out in August, but certainly in November. Okay. Um, Clark, you'd mentioned um, just a large volume of duplicate absentee ballots that, that were being driven to your office. Is that completely controlled um, by the myvote.wi site or it, I mean is there a way that the assuming that that's the case is there a way that the state can sort of mitigate that impact the clerk um, I'm on the clerks list and so clerks can throw out their ideas or, or what they're thinking and clerks have contacted them already asking for them to eliminate that um, I would still probably have that same thing happening with the emails along with my vote but at least it wouldn't be like six of them in my vote sure so yes they we we've asked for that to be looked into and i think even from a just purely from an efficiency perspective it seems to me that even emails ought to get a system just so that you've got that check right so that way you're not processing quite because the objective here is to minimize the number of times you're handling something and right. and so to have it funnel through one system even if there's multiple in points, right? It's got to eventually get to the to the same system. We had issues, and I'm I'm hearing that more and more from the clerks. Um, the system did go down a couple times, okay. um, and that you know that was an issue. Um, there's just some other things that you know when it's computers. Some clerks are stating that they don't even have requests for people that requested. That's, that's more visual in a smaller municipality than it is with the city of Green Bay being, being so large. Um, so we kind of just have to go by what we're given. Um, so if somebody asked, and like I said, that's why I would go and search to see if I had it. And then I could tell the person, yep, we have it. It's just not processed yet. So that's another issue um, that I hope they look into. Um, and, and the reason why we have separate email, um, some people couldn't get into the system. Um, 
that could be because their birth date was entered wrong. Um, and we send out what's called HAVA letters. And so a person will get a letter saying something isn't matching here. Can you please call the clerk's office and verify that information? So if somebody got a letter and their birth date's wrong in the system, when they go to my vote, they'd be putting in their correct birth date, but that's not how it is in the system, so it's not gonna find a match. So people should always respond to those letters so that we can have a, a clean slate. We also had others that said, I'm not finding that I'm registered. I had many of those and I sent those to the WC. The first one, she said, well, I find her. And I had said, I can too, but this person can't. So every time I got that, I sent it to the WEC to get a response. And after a while I didn't, which no blame, I'm not placing blame. They were inundated the same as we were, but it's frustrating to the citizens. So then I would go in and um, I'd have them with their email requested that way. We also have people that aren't um, comfortable with that system. They're more comfortable emailing. So I always wanna make sure I have that option for people that don't wanna go into a system that they can just email me and request it. Um, Cause you know, snail mail is really getting to be snail mail. Um, so, but then other people take take advantage of that and request on all different platforms. So, you know, that's kind of a hard thing too. Sure, okay. Um, I think about, it was probably about two weeks before the election, I had sent you an email uh, regarding drive up voting and I believe I received a response from uh, Chief of Staff Jeffries. Um, was that an option that was considered? Drive up voting and okay, I was watching TV and saw the drive up voting. Um, what I saw, so I'm not criticizing because maybe just what I saw wasn't at the right time. You can't just have one person going up to a car with a ballot. To me, it'd be no different than curbside voting where two people would have to go out. So at this, at this point, because we didn't have, I have five people in the office Two were over at transit that left three of us. One had to leave because she didn't have childcare but worked from home. That left the clerk and the deputy clerk in the office trying to do labels. We didn't have that possibility. Some of those places that were doing drive through though did set up tents. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a cost. Sure. Um, so more of a staffing issue in that regard then, which I think has been well well stated that that was a big yeah. challenge. Yeah. I would really have to think that through to make sure that we are following proper protocol. Um, okay. And yeah. just on that one real quick, Alder Johnson, you know, city of Racine um, essentially adopted that as their, as their strategy um, for, for the April election, not just leading up to it. Um, every polling location was actually drive up in Racine. Um, so I think it's absolutely something that, that we should, take a look at um, if it's something that can be done appropriately and safely and legally, definitely for August. Now, November with weather um, presents some additional challenges, but um, but yeah, something I, I'm very interested in looking into. Okay, great. Um, uh, clerk, uh, what additional support was offered? I mean, I think we talked a lot about like how taxed you were, your existing staff, and, and how we did mobilize maybe some additional city staff internally. But I'm just curious if you could expose upon that a little bit more in terms of what support was offered to expand your capacity um, to, to process absentee ballots. As far as certification, um, I said I didn't have time to sit with someone. It, You know, you can't just take the training and plop someone down and expect, expect them to be able to do it. Um, they would have a lot of questions, which would take away from the staff. Um, so we had so many people doing everything that didn't entail the certification. So what we would do is, um, you know, we would work at night or the weekend and get all these labels generated, bring them in, put them on the counter. We would have from all different departments come in. They would grab the labels. Um, and this was 
um, mainly done up in the park department with different departments, but they took ballots up there. They took the envelopes and labels and they just did that all day long. And as we were doing labels during the day, we'd put them on the counter, they'd take them up there. Um, I did have um, someone email me saying, my wife got a ballot, I didn't. He wanted to know why. And I, I felt bad about that. But if we, with that many coming in, if we put labels on the counter and someone took one that asked after, you know, and it was during that cutoff time, unfortunately, someone did get missed. Um, it would be too hard for us to do everything in order. We tried to take the order of the requests as they were printed out, they were kept in order, but as far as labels, they were not. But we, we got, um, like I said, every department helped us. Okay. Um, when it comes to the poll worker piece, I'm just curious, I guess, what, if anything, did we do to secure additional poll workers? I mean, was it, it sounds, and, and specifically, I've heard things, you know, that, that people were turned away. I mean, was it really rooted in the training? Was that the issue? Definitely. Um, you know, I, I was keeping the names, um, but I didn't have any chance to train to just, like I said, take a webinar and they first go in and take a webinar. I mean, I have people in their first training when I actually do face-to-face -face training, the people that are brand new will sit there and you can just see the glazed over look. And I'll look at them and I'll say, it's okay if you're not grasping this all right now, but you're getting the verbiage, you're getting, you know, and then you'll go to the polls and you'll get a little more um, we have actually our own manual of how we do things. Every clerk does things a little different. We have to follow the law, but there's still a little leeway in doing this and doing that. Um, so it just wasn't that simple. Um, I, I didn't have time to train. And if I'm going to put people out there, it's not a matter of just getting bodies in the seats. My concern was being able to balance the election afterward because for instance, if somebody would mark in the poll book in the wrong spot, so then somebody in the system will get say that they voted and the person that truly voted didn't. What if they forgot to put a number in completely? I will never know who deserved that, that vote in their record. And people do look at their history. So that was my whole concern is I want to be able to balance this election and I need people that know what they're doing to make okay. that happen. Okay, um, w one of the things I know, um, Mayor and Clerk Teske, other one, I, I know that it's been made clear, right, that we, we didn't want to make the decision to implicate people in this process. It was a health concern, so I'm not looking to, to, to dig into that issue so much as it is a question of, did we consider offering hazard pay where the essence of hazard pay is that people know you know, that they are doing hazardous work. Uh, was, was hazard pay an option that was considered at all? Uh, no, it's not something that was considered for city employees generally. Um, Clerk Teske can talk a little bit about reimbursement maybe for the poll workers that, <clears throat> that did commit to working. Right, we didn't, um, we didn't set anything ahead of time. Um, I was following WEC's direction and they were saying anyone 65 and older, they didn't recommend to work. So I checked with the law department and they said to send that out, make sure that everyone knows it's not, or anyone with an underlying condition also, it's not recommended they work. Um, I was looking at it more of a health standpoint. Um, I did ask after the fact now, because normally if, a chief inspector at a, a two ward polling location, if one of the inspectors calls in sick and the other one covers both, which is very hard to do, they get more money for that. And so I did request um, that these workers committing all that time and, and doing more than one ward that maybe they could look at getting more money, but not, not beforehand. Okay, um, just two more questions, bear with me. Um, there was, uh, I think again we, we've we've covered the issue of the National Guard thoroughly. 
um, with one exception, and that is, um, you know, I, I, I recall seeing in the media at least several weeks in advance of the election that the governor had said that he was going to call uh, the guard to help. Now, I know that specifics were not made available, you know, until before the election. But what I am curious about is recognizing that the governor did make that announcement. Did anybody from City Hall reach out to the governor's office um, requesting more information about when people would be available, how they would be available, would they be trained? Did anybody make that proactive touch point with the governor's office? When I read that information, I know what you're talking about. Um, that was more in response to before the election, not the day of. That was help. Um, and they said nothing about them being certified in the system. So with us having the city staff there to do labels and inserting ballots, we were covered that way. Um, I didn't hear any more after that. But where okay. I needed it, and it was stress to the county, the bottleneck was um, processing, getting the labels printed. That was that was our bottleneck. Okay. Um, and then one thing that we really haven't touched on much, and I would ask you to maybe just talk about this a little bit, and I know that I had spoken with the mayor prior to the election about this particular item, but who made the decision to close early voting, um, which of course was in violation of a ruling from Wisconsin Elections Commission. Um, and I knew had obviously uh, reestablished it um, at Metro, but I'm just curious if you could walk us through that process of like how that decision was made um, when that decision was made and anything that any information, I guess, that might be relevant and useful. Um, so that again, when we're looking at future elections, if decisions like that need to be made, that we ensure we're in compliance, you know, what are some things that you could maybe share with us through that process? Well, I was watching the clerk list and some were doing it by appointment. Um, some were really restricting the hours. Our concern was, okay, City Hall was closed. Where where were we gonna do this? Where were, because the girls in the office were scared. They were scared of the coronavirus. They wanted to make sure they were protected and I don't blame them. Um, so then, it, you know, I, I've always mentioned even because we don't have glass in our office, you know, the transit station, the water department, they all have the glass. So. Um, Director Kiwis was kind enough to allow us in the dispatch area, and the girls said, yeah, I would feel good about that. We'll have gloves on, um, and then we have that glass, we have the speaker we can talk through, um, and they felt safe that way. And I think that's truly important. Um, yes, it's their job, but they need to feel secure. Um, so that that's when we decided then um, we were going to have longer days, but, you know, we were short staffed in the office also. Um, and we looked at 10 to 2 as morning and afternoon. Um, and then the law states we have to be open till 5, the Thursday and Friday before the election until 5. So we did the 10 to 5. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and I think if I want to, you know, delve Alder, into Alder just... Real, real briefly, you are uh, at five minutes with your allotted time. So if you could just make this final question real quick. Yep, and it's actually, I only do have one more thing and it's really more of a rhetorical question um, that I just want you to think about in, in, as we head into these August, November elections and specifically, what is it that we can do to help as a city council? Can we help you recruit more poll workers? Can we help you train people? Can we allocate more resources? Whatever that is. I mean, your imagination is the only thing that's going to limit this. So again, rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it today. Um, but I want you to know that we are here to support you and your team and whatever you do. We just have to know how we can do that. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that, Alder. Thanks. Uh, Alder Galvin. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. And um, I, I will start off by saying, uh, Mayor, you've taken full responsibility for this. So. Um, when I ask this next question, um, I, I, I understand that. I was surprised to find out earlier this year that the tr head of the transit has the authority to shut down the buses with or without your permission. So I, I am asking, does the clerk have the right to make decisions with or without your 
permission as it relates to the vote, uh, you know, on voting day. So, uh, you know, I don't know the legal answer to that question. Okay. Uh, I'll just say, you know, what I said to Alder Weary, which is that this was a very collaborative process, as Clerk Teske said, you know, she and I and Celestine, Ms. Jeffries rather, and, and Attorney Chavez met regularly uh, for a stretch of time. It was every morning <clears throat> at 8 or 8.30, checking in to, to talk about all these things. Um, but I've, as I've said repeatedly, you know, Clerk Teske, Chris is our elections expert. So I, I trust her expertise. I value that expertise and I respect it. And so, um, you know, if, if if I wish back to it or a disagreement, you know, that was always taken into account. And I, I just feel very confident in saying that it was, um, you know, we, we had, I felt like we had consensus going into it for, for good or ill, obviously. Um, but it, it was a very healthy dialogue that we had among those who were in, involved in the discussion. Okay. And I, and I appreciate that answer. And I appreciate, uh, you know, I know from my years on the police department, Command staff always has input. And even if you have to go all the way down into the lower ranks, you, you want to have input. And then you make your best decision based on that. I'm only asking because I just, there seems to be some insinuation out there that there might be a legal standard that the clerk has the right or does not have the right to make these decisions. That's all I was trying to, to find out. Um, and, and this is for Chris. There are five certified people in your office and you would make the sixth or are you one of the five? I'm one of the five. Okay. Now you, someone asked you what it takes to get certified. Can you give me a time frame? I was somewhat shocked and awed at the list that you were reading off and everything, but how much time is it a day? Is it, you know, like, like we in the police department, again, you've got training standards for certain skills. So for this skill to be one of the five certified people, what is the length of time it takes to get someone trained to that level? If the last time that I had someone do it um, was probably about a year and a half ago, it's, it's roughly three half day to three quarters of a day to go through all the different webinars. Okay, so, so six hours say, to, to go through the webinars. Is there any follow-up training? Like do you have them actually sit down on a machine and actually do some hands-on training? That's when we would sit with them and and have them start getting used to the system, but we would be there with them to answer questions. Right, right. to get yes. them warmed up, get them up to speed so they get the repetition in there. How long Correct. does that take, would you say? <laughs> and, and I know you have to squeeze it in and amongst all your other skills. So you can't say I'm taking out a day of everyone's no, work I, to do this. The reason why I laugh is because sometimes um, some of the things that come up, we'll still call the WEC on it. But okay. to actually, um, you know, we had a couple of girls um, help with the election after and they worked, I think, three or four weeks, and they still had questions. Oh, sure. It, okay. It's, it's just not, you know, cut and dry. Right. Are you the only one that can do that one-on-one -on -one training with them once they've gone through the webinar? Or could another clerk with a lot of experience sit down with these other staff members and get them up to speed with hands-on training? I mean, in the, in my, in the staff? Yes. Um. It would be Kim or I. We do the training for everything. Okay. So if we identified, say, for the future as one of our possible solutions, we identified 10 to 15 city employees who said, you know, I'm willing to take the six-hour webinar training, and then we want to make sure you're not just going to throw them into the pit with the lions. So, so you or Kim would have to sit down with them and run them through a few scenarios and, and get them kind of warmed up to using the computer and, and that kind of stuff and how to find answers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Getting to the computers. How many computers do we have right now that are set up to work with the state? Um, I, that's going to be a mic question. I'm not sure all the ones. Um, well, we have, do we have one for each certified person right now? We do, but then we also have the laptops now and we have some at the counter. Okay, so if we were to identify 15 volunteers who got webinar training and we said, ah, we don't have enough computers, we could have some standby computers set up in advance mm. that they could use, correct? I would think maybe the training room up on fourth floor, if that was available. Oh, um, that, yeah. 
We are having issues though, um, what it's called, I guess, OSWAP. That is the um, security on it. Um, it kind of interferes with some of our other work. So that's, I'm pretty sure that that would happen, but that would be more of a mic question. So, so that's an identified issue that we should start addressing now in yes. case we run into the same thing in the future. Okay. Yes. Um, poll workers. Now I know we have quite a few and most of them are older. And so in a situation like this, a lot of them opted out. I right? mm -hmm. can't fault them at all. Right. How long does it take and who, okay, how long does it take to train a poll worker to work at a poll? How many hours? Um, ideally, I like them to go through about three hours of face-to-face -face training. Okay. And then I also send them home for some light reading. Okay. We always laugh um, of the election manual and then of our training manual, um, which goes through um, like the script of what you have to say when a person sure. walks up, things like that. Sure. Um, so, you know, you can ask poll workers, um, they're not comfortable even going into the first one, but I tell them then they will see the process, what they're reading, then they actually see more hands-on. Okay. And that chief inspector is the one then that um, fills them in on the little things. So I always like it if a person can work a primary and then they're set for the general. So they, okay. they kind of get, the, you know, a feeling for it in a, a, a lower turnout election. All right. And, and usually pair them with someone who has experience. That's huge. Okay. And, and who does that three hours of training or is that something they do online? Well, the WEC now does have training. They, they did come out with it. Otherwise, I would um, create an agenda um, and Kim or I would be the ones to train depending on our schedule or if we get sick, there's always one that can do it. And we sure. have five, tr five training sessions for um, an election. So there's different time slots for people because there's so many poll workers. Okay. So I guess for the future, obviously, we're going to try and identify new poll workers, get subs trained up to speed, all that other kind of stuff. And if we know in advance, it helps to get more trained if we know we have a thing. My next question involves the uh, absentee ballot request. Now, people can do it by email. They can do it by mail. Um, MyVote.gov, is that considered an email request or is that a third source of requesting an absentee ballot? That's a third source. So it comes it comes to us though as an email to Kim and I. Okay. So out of those how many did you say 17,000 email requests? Right. Some of those were from myvote.gov. Yes. Okay. Mo most of them were. Yes. All right. Again, thank you very much for everything you've done. I appreciate it. And I think uh, many people do, although we all know we can do better moving forward and we just have to start working on that process. So again, I thank you. Thank you. Thanks Alder. <clears throat> we did have Alder Brunette in the queue. He's dropped off though. Can you hear me now? Yes. His work. Thank you. I figured it out my first as as council president. Um, question for Claire Teske, the, um, I, I heard that the line at West High School stopped for like an hour at some point. Is that true or? Um, someone emailed me that um, from one of the parties. And so I called over from what I understand is there was too many people that ended up in the gym that they felt they had to hold off until it dispersed. Okay. All right. And that's all. I think a lot of the other council members asked a lot of the questions I had. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alder. We have a couple Alders to speak for a second time in the queue. Is that correct? Alder Weary. Thank you. I know, I believe there's people who have been watching and waiting for about three hours to get a chance to comment. So I'd make a motion to open the floor. Second. Motion made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Scannell to open the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it, the floor is open. 
Do we have folks online who are interested in speaking? Good evening, everybody. Bonnie Gepke here. If uh, I may speak, I am interested. Uh, please state your name and address. You, or to state your name, sorry, your address for the record. Sure. Uh, Vanya Kepke, 4850 Stella Court, Hobart, Wisconsin, 54155. Not sure if we got this, not sure if we got the street address there. Could you say that just one more time? Yep. 4850 Stella Court. Yep. Okay, go ahead, sir. Awesome. Well, first off, I just want to congratulate the new city council. Uh, thank you for your service. Congrats to President Burnett. Congrats to Vice President Dorf on your, um, on your appointments as well. I also want to thank each one of you uh, for doing a great job in this unprecedented time, specifically to um, uh, Alderman Johnson for the small business loans you've been working on so tirelessly to help out the constituents of Green Bay. Um, I just mentioned the heroes um, at the polls. Um, it was a it was a privilege to work alongside with them for over 13 hours on election day at Green Bay East High School and help those 1,338 voters. Um, it, it was a pleasure to help disinfect those pens, check in the individuals to get them to the right ward, and to manage the lines and direct the flow of traffic. Um, those heroes are um, Chris Teske. Yeah, um, you are an amazing person. Number one. Uh, but number two, you're one of the best clerks in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, all the senior citizen poll workers, thank you. You were amazing. Green Bay Police Department and all the uh, first responders who were on scene with managing the election, thank you. Chief Smith, you were there in person at uh, Green Bay East High School. I worked with a lot of your uh, staff throughout the day, so thank you for your help there. Um, also, shout out to the Public Works. Those uh, shields were perfectly made, the tables fit in right in. So shout out to Public Works, beautiful job. So the few points I just wanted to add uh, after witnessing uh, what took place at Green Bay East High School for over 13 and a half hours are these things. I would ask that the city council analysis, uh, the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities to improve, and maybe even some threats I would, um, may repeat. So a SWOT analysis I would recommend uh, independent uh, review by the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Uh, they spoke on Saturday a little bit about Milwaukee and Green Bay, and there was definitely uh, some concern voiced on the Wisconsin Elections Commission. Um, I would also recommend that a contingency plan or a manual would be put, place, uh, put in place now knowing what we know. Uh, that could be modeled not only by local municipalities, but also around the country. And uh, third is, um, given that the wards are pay paper, is there an op uh, opportunity to possibly move towards a digital uh, uh, ward or polling system where you can keep track of those wards in a digital tablet as I saw in other municipalities? Um, that would be a suggestion. So a um, few suggestions there. And as far as questions that I heard from many of those 1,330, um, the, the chief um, election inspector at Green Bay East High School, I believe her name is Terry. She works for the police department. Uh, she was the hero. Uh, her ingenuity and her um, mobility throughout the day really allowed us to process up to two thirds more voters than expected um, because we went from one uh, polling one, one table for voting to uh, apologies. three. It, apologies, Mr. Kepke. Um, your three minutes has expired. So if you could just um, wrap yeah. up as, as soon as possible. Okay, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I would want to say thank you to all of those uh, heroes, as I call them, for your efforts. And um, as far as final questions, just the 48 National Guards that were not used compared to 152 in other municipalities, and um, just doing what we can to recruit more poll, poll workers. So thank you. Thanks for your comments. Mayor, can I, can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. But, Vanya, you kind of cut out. So I, um, I just want to, were you talking about um, Badger books? That the poll books would be electronic? Yes, it was just a lot of shuffling okay. through the paper ones. Uh, but yeah, the electronic ones are pretty smooth. Okay, I just wanted to address that. Oh. Um, those are about $1,500 a piece. Okay. And we would need, um, depending on the voters, 
we would need three or four per ward. I have looked into all this. Um, it, that's a huge cost to the city. And in the February election, they stalled. Um, so I would worry about that. You still, you know, print the poll book. So there's still that backup. But um, there are some concerns with those. Um, and we're kind of holding off. For one thing, the budget can't support it. We did get express votes. We were forced to get those this year, which we had a bond $130,000 for. Those are the machines that um, meet ADA compliance. Um, so I guess I would, I understand where that looked really interesting, but there's kinks to be worked out in that. But I am on top of that. Thank you for bringing that up. Absolutely, again, thank you for an amazing job. Thank you. Thanks for your comments, Mr. Kepke. And just to clarify, it was actually Parks Department that made the uh, cough guards. So just wanna make sure they, they get the shout out for, for their good work. Um, uh, another member of the public interested in speaking? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go now. Elliot Christensen, 1988 Mulberry Lane. Uh, don't hit the start button until I do. I'm not going to give anybody congratulations because I didn't know we were limited to three minutes again. I've been waiting three hours, so I'm hitting my start button now. All right. Uh, so uh, I'm really glad that uh, flowers and letters came. Um, people in prison get flowers and letters. That doesn't excuse poor performance by our city government. People are losing their jobs right now because of this disease and the reaction to it by our governments. Okay. So you guys need to treat this seriously. Passing the buck is inexcusable. Pause to think about that for just a second, okay? Uh, you had 13, 14 hours to handle uh, 1,300 voters at these two locations. You decided to have two locations. That's fine. We had two schools. These schools have that many students at the schools. They handle that many students in a day. You couldn't handle that many voters. I don't know what's up with that. You got to figure that out, okay? We have other elections coming up. You got to figure that out. Everybody else, we are the worst in the state of Wisconsin. I, congratulating each other for the last three hours. I had to sit and listen to you congratulating each other and flipping coins for three hours so that I can have my three minutes. This is unreal. Uh, nothing was communicated, okay? We didn't know that there were two polling locations until the last minute. Uh, so changing your mind at the last minute, that would have been fine because nobody knew the polling locations until the last minute anyway. So why didn't you add some more? That would have been fine. Uh, no bathroom. Uh, so we're in the middle of a pandemic, but seriously, we're worried about diseases. Oh, sanitation, I think, is probably a little higher than, you know, touching somebody, but fine, you know, whatever. Um, curbside voting whatever that process is i don't even understand what was talked about you got to set up an appointment so, like customer service on that is appalling this whole process is insane so now to the national guard i have people in my classes that were in the national guard they were pulled out of class a week early they received training i don't know what kind of insane training the city of green bay has that none of the rest of the state of wisconsin has but it's got to change everybody else handled it and we didn't we did not we are the worst this is title town. We're the best, but we're the worst. It's embarrassing. And congratulating yourselves for three hours is appalling. And I, I don't understand it. I mean, Vanya, he's a great guy. He wants to come on and tell you guys how great you are. You're not great. This is not great. And the city does not think you're great. You can tell yourselves you're great. You can feel you're great all you want. You're not great. And the city does not think you're great right now. Uh, they're not all telling you that. They're not all telling you you're great. Uh, they're not all telling you you're not great. You're not hearing from everybody. You, they do not think you're great. People have, they, that is their civic duty, their civic right. They didn't get to vote. They didn't get to vote. My wife didn't get to vote. That is outrageous. The state election commission voted on party lines to not investigate. They were going to take it up. The, the Milwaukee and Green Bay elections, they voted on party lines not to investigate it. Congratulations, you're going to get off the hook on this because you're not partisan. You know, I heard, I heard from uh, <coughs> President Jesse Burnett that, it, that you're not partisan, but you are partisan. So. Your, your three minutes has expired. And thanks for your comments. Is there another citizen on the line who'd like to speak? I will entertain a motion. Motion to close the floor. 
Motion made by Alder Scannell. Second. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens to close the floor. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are back to regular business. Floor is closed. Alder Weary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I'm going to make a motion for a written report from Kurt Teske regarding failures and opportunities from, from the April 7th, 2020 election. I'll second that. Motion made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Brunette for um, a written report produced by Clerk Teske. Further discussion? Uh, Alder Dorf. Thank you. We're doing committee work, it seems, right now on the council floor. This is going to P and P on Monday. This is when these kinds of should be having a plan and bringing that plan forward. I would be against this motion. Um, I'd like it to be withdrawn, but I don't think it will be. Um, but I, I, we're doing committee work. We're going to be doing this again on Monday, and that is the appropriate place for us to decide what the next steps are. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Dorf. Uh, just maybe a question for Attorney Chavez. This is an informational item. Is it appropriate to entertain the motion that Alder Weary offered? I you're on mute, Attorney. Since it is a, an informational item, there is no action that can be taken on it. Thank you, Attorney Chavez, so that the motion uh, is out of order. Further comments, Alder Weary? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is for Chris Teske. Uh, I just needed to, um, all those questions that I had asked of you you know, a couple of weeks ago, and you gave quite a few answers. You know, I'm I'm going to be on P and I'm on the P and P committee. We're going to be dealing with a lot of this, so I, I would appreciate if if you got a copy of those answers that you um, gave verbally, you know, in a written format, so I could look at those. I think that's important. Um, and that's it. That's all I really need from you, and I would appreciate. That. Before Monday, if possible, you already you already spoke on it, so it's just a matter of printing it up. So, if that's okay, I, I request that. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell. Uh, I would just like to pitch in. Uh, uh, I know it was a very trying and difficult time. Uh, I think anytime you're going to have a uh, in-person voting uh, during a pandemic even in uh, places where apparently there's an, uh, uh, things, things, people think things went well. Um, this is just a, a very difficult, difficult situation. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate your handling it the best you could. I don't think there's any, uh, as Alder Dorf said, any malfeasance here, a anything inefficient. You've certainly proven your chops, uh, <clears throat> Ms. Teske in the past, uh, whenever there was a problem, like when a few years ago with the, out at the university, you problem solved that and the next year we went, you know, we've been doing fine since then. Mm -hmm. I see that pretty much the same with this election. Uh, I trust your expertise, we'll problem solve this and we'll go forward. Um, I, I just appreciate all that you've done in this difficult time uh, and, uh, as well as the mayor and uh, Attorney Chavez and our chief of staff. So um, it was a situation that no one should have been put in. And it's unfortunately uh, we were. And uh, I just appreciate the, uh, the job you, you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Alder Burnett. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a quick, couple of quick comments and then a question for Clerk Teske. The, um, the anger out there is real. I've heard it. 30 40 people who are absolutely irate that they didn't have an opportunity to vote. And if they did, the experience they had was very, very poor. And we need to do better as a city and there has to be accountability. Um, just the stories I've heard are just outrageous. So I'm looking for accountability somewhere along the line. I did, a few people had mentioned the Wisconsin Elections Commission who 
who met on Saturday, I listened to that meeting and I think there's a lot of misunderstanding out there. They did not really discuss the Green Bay election very much at all. The 3-3 three, three vote was to not investigate the Milwaukee election. There, were, there was a few folks on that commission who were from the Milwaukee area, so that dominated the discussion. Alder Weary has a communication before the Protection and Policy Committee for a full investigation of the uh, election. My question to Clerk Teske is, would you welcome an independent investigation of the city's election? My answer to that is bring it on. We did, we followed all the WBC's guidance. Um, there's clerk communications out there. We did everything that we, we possibly could to make it the best election we could under the circumstances and we have nothing to hide. Right, and, and the, the, that is not directed towards your professional competence at all, because up until this point, I have had no poor conversations or com, uh, comments from the public regarding Green Bay elections. This is a first, and hopefully it's a nomin nominally, but I guess the, the thing we need to understand is that there are a lot of races throughout the city, including this city council, yeah. county board, uh, where there is a very narrow margin a victory between the top four getter and the second. So we have uh, we have denied people the opportunity to, to vote for their leaders in a in a proper way that they're deserving as citizens to affect the people who make the decisions that affect their lives. And so it's not to undermine you, uh, Clerk Teske. I, I I don't felt your sincerity and your truthfulness, but somewhere along the way something happened and we need to have an independent investigation. We'll discuss that at a later point, but thank you for the time. Well, can I, can I ask you a question? Mayor, can I ask a yeah, question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Alder Burnett, I guess my question to you is, um, what, what would you do different under the circumstances? We tried everything we could to get the absentee ballots out, but by court order, we couldn't do it. Um, I guess I don't, you know, I'm not saying that, I guess what I'm trying to get at, the clerk's office is very upset that people didn't get their ballot. We, that's what we're there for, is to make sure that everyone can vote. We were so disappointed. I can't, I can't go against a court order I guess I don't. I don't understand what you're looking for. Um, if if you think there's something we could have done to improve and still follow the law, I'm more than welcome to. You're more than welcome to just tell me right now what you um, think could have been done different. Sure, Clerk Teske. Like uh, you, you presented a lot of information, and then, quite frankly, it's a lot to digest. And I, I agree. I was hoping for some written report that I could review ahead of time. You answer all the questions very forthrightly. I, I think uh, that's a, that speaks to your professionalism to ask your, answer your question, what would I have done? And this might cross between you and the mayor. I, I don't want to throw either of you under the bus with, you know, but I, I think we should never have denied the help of the National Guard and we should never have made it sound as though that they were not able to step into that situation, considering the fact that they respond to natural disasters and combat zones. And, and that's not to diminish the work that happens in the clerk office and our election volunteers, but for anyone in the city government to suggest that National Guard members were not qualified or not able to step in, I think that that's the sort of thing, that's the thing I've been hearing a lot from the community. Why in the world would anyone have that opinion that National Guard members cannot handle a municipal election? So. Then, then I just ask, ask that people, I just want to clarify, go out to the Wisconsin Election Commission website and look at what it takes to, to understand an election. And, and maybe that will help clarify what I was getting at, you know, other clerks too, if we would have had a whole polling location just of the National Guard, we all had, not all, the ones I've talked to had doubts that that would be able to work. 
and I didn't want any um, anything out there to say that our election did not balance because then it would look like something went on with the election. Right. Everybody that went to the polls got to vote. I, I understand the line was long and I'm sorry for that, but it was because of the coronavirus. So I just want you to see my side of it um, and, and what it takes to be a poll worker. People really don't understand what that takes and what you need to know. I'm not diminishing, you know, if we could get them trained now ahead and, you know, work with them a little, have at it. But that short a time frame, and then to realize that some didn't get trained, we would have been in a bind. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all for the questions, Mayor. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Your Honor. And this is actually for uh, uh, Alder Burnett because uh, of some comments he just made. So I want some clarification. Um, you, you say you're for an investigation. Um, you say you think Chris did a good job, but you said there has to be accountability. I guess I'm asking what kind of accountability you're looking for here. I mean, what, what, are you, what do you mean by that? Thank you. Alder Burnett. Well, first of all, we need to have an independent investigation that figure out if there was anything that the city did uh, that they should not have done consistent with state law and how to run elections. As far as what the accountability is, people in government need to be accountable like any other industry. If there's something that I did as a council member by maybe ceding my authority to uh, make these decisions or not stepping in to you know, direct things a little more, voice my opinion, that's something I have to live with as well. That the election was a disaster. It's not a witch hunt at all. It's not to it's not to uh, demean the character of anyone. And the only way that I think we can get an unbiased opinion is to get someone from the outside who is trained and, and tasked with the responsibility to oversee the elections in the state of Wisconsin to tell us what happened, what did the city do wrong? There were, there were 1,850 municipalities, Clerk Teske mentioned earlier, that she heard from other clerks that I think you said that other clerks said that there were some struggles or perhaps that that's what you heard. When I was on that conference call with the Wisconsin Elections Commission, they, they pointed out the uh, Ms. Megan Wolf, unless I'm hearing her wrong, she said that the elections in all 1,848 municipalities other than Green Bay and Milwaukee went fine. So that's what I heard from her mouth. And so to answer your question, Alder Galvin, I, I don't know at this point. All I know is I my phone's been ringing off the hook and I've been getting email after email from people who are calling for the mayor to recall and resign and get impeached and all this stuff. I'm, I don't want that sort of stuff, but I think that when the public is demanding and angry about things to that level, we need to do what we need to do as a city to get an outside opinion. And from that point on, we can make those decisions, but somewhere along the line, something messed up. I don't know if I answered your question. I'm not... I'm not looking to assign blame to anyone right now. The city messed up, someone messed up, and the, the public did not get the opportunity to effectively and efficiently vote for the people they wanted to make their decisions in their government. Well, I, I, I guess my concern is you're, you're, we have a mayor who says he's responsible. If there were mistakes and the mistakes that were made, they're his responsibility. Um, and, and I mean, he's, he's owned up to it. I haven't, I haven't heard anything different. Um, and I think we all know there were mistakes made. Uh, we, we heard a list of them tonight. And we're asking for changes for the future. Now, if, if you feel, and I kind of get the sense you do, that there might have been a possibility of illegal action taken here or something like that, I'm, and I'm getting concerned that there's no. some, something going on that, that makes you feel like that. Or that, no, I, that, that I we have, you know, and anyone can ask for an, an investigation. You could as a private citizen. I'm not sure why we have to have it as the council. This becomes a council issue for the council to request an investigation. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And can I clarify, I'm not alleging absolutely any illegal activity. That, that, that is quite a stretch. I, I, I would not suggest something flippantly like that. That's a serious accusation. I'm only relaying what the public has been telling me. We have an agenda item on Monday or at the next protection policy 
maybe I'll look at things a little fresh after Ms. Chesky's uh, report and maybe I'll change my mind, but I'm just relaying Alderman Galvin what I've been hearing from the public. Okay. That's all, accountability. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Alder. All right, seeing no further comments, we're gonna move along to announcements. I'll just press your button if you have an announcement for us. Uh, Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you alluded to it earlier in, in your announcements, but I just want to emphasize the point again. Um, the work of the Revolving Loan Fund Committee to reallocate $100,000 of HUD funding for the purpose uh, of the creation of the Small Business um, Relief Fund. That fund is uh, live right now. I want to thank uh, Wendy Townsend in the Community and Economic Development Department for, for putting the work into that and, and getting that live. Um, there are two different tiers, five, up to $5,000 for businesses under 20 employees, for businesses 20 to 100 employees. You are allowed to borrow up to $10,000. The first year is deferred. Um, there are some requirements, but it's because of, of the nature of the funding. Um, I am continuing to work with city staff on looking at some other options that we can put before council to consider. But in the meantime, this one is live. It is available. We want as many small businesses in our community know about it it doesn't do us any good if this funding is not uh exercised so please let let businesses in your respective districts know about it thank you mayor thanks alder alder dorf well in keeping with your announcement i do have to say happy birthday to silas um dorf who is six years old today and he his wish was to have the best birthday party ever and he Instead, he has having a COVID-19 birthday party. But mm -hmm. happy birthday, Silas Dorf. Thank you. Happy birthday, Silas. Happy birthday, Silas. <coughs> Alder Weary. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to tell the district uh, eight residents, I greatly appreciate them <coughs> trusting me uh, once again to be their vocal, passionate alderman. So thank you. Yes. Uh, <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, just want to congratulate all of my fellow council members on their, their elections of the City Council. Uh, welcome to Alder Person Gerlach. A welcome. I uh, think you'll do a great job. I also want to um, thank you all for uh, electing me as Council President, although it took a coin flip. I would like to get that coin if I could, just for my own keeping and then it cost you 25 cents. Uh, lastly 25 cents I, I'd gladly take that um, and then I lastly I want to uh, you know thank Alderman Nicholson Andy Nicholson he had been a city council member and county board member for 18 years and, you know I think uh, he served the, the city for a very long time whether anyone has a personal opinion and denied that for 18 years he uh, worked hard for the constituents in his district so I just want to thank uh Thank Alderman Nicholson for his service to the city of Green Bay. Thanks, Alder. <coughs> Alder, Alder Stoyer. Got to unmute yourself, Alder. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Alder Nicholson for his service as well. Uh, mimicking what Alder Burnett said. I'd also like to thank the citizens of District 10 for electing me for the fourth time, or fifth time actually. Um, these citizens are more than just voters and such, they're friends as well. And I look to these people for advice. So many times there will be tough decisions to make and they are very helpful in, in guiding me. I don't pretend to know everything, but I, I look forward to working with this council Congratulations to Alder Burnett and Alder Dorf. Uh, I look forward to working with both of you. Very all the other Alders and Alder Gerlach, welcome aboard. So uh, congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Now we are on to recognition and awards. We don't have any recognitions or awards tonight. On to appointments. First item here is city officials. So I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Stevens. Uh, any discussion here? Seeing none, 
Mayor, I have uh, my light hit. Oh, Alder Johnson, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I would actually, and, and please call me out of order if in fact this is out of order, but I would actually like to move that we hold this. Um, the purpose for this is because I've received sufficient enough feedback from the public um, to create pause before proceeding. I think and out of respect for um, the, the numerous staff that we have on this particular item, um, I'd like to, to hold the appointment to properly vet these concerns and allow uh, you, the mayor, uh, to hear and respond before proceeding with reappointment. Um, the other concern that I have is we're seeing this is part of the process and certainly I think this is something that should be addressed, but we obviously have a new alder person that was first sworn in tonight um, really hasn't had the opportunity to meet our department heads um, and the people that are up for reappointment. And I, you know, and I, I know that's part of the standard process, but that just seems a little bit odd in any given year um, that we potentially have council members that are voting on, on the reappointment of department heads without having the opportunity to, to learn more about them. Um, given the fact that some of, some of these concerns that have been expressed to me are related to performance issues, um, I do not feel comfortable having that discussion uh, publicly. And because there is not uh, uh, verbiage included on the agenda, I think it would be best to, to hold this. Um, I don't see the sense of urgency and why we couldn't have sort of uh, uh, department heads that continue to operate in their current, uh, in their current status, uh, but allowing us a couple of additional weeks to again, properly vet out some of the feedback that I've received. So that, that is a motion, provided it's not order, out of order, um, that we hold this until the next meeting. Thanks, Alder. Attorney Chavez, could you weigh in on that motion? <clears throat> uh, motion to hold is not out of order. Thank you. So we have a motion to hold just the, is it just the city officials aspect of the appointments? Correct, and because they're all lumped together, that's that's why the motion uh, would include, I guess, holding item N1. Excuse me, I have pushed my button and I have been referred to personally, so I would like to speak when yep. it is the right time. Go ahead, Alder Gerlach. Um, I would just like to point out that I, during the process of running for this office, I did personally meet for at least one hour, and in some cases more, with, um, uh, city attorney, with city clerk, with comptroller. I met with the director of parks, recreation, and forestry. I met with the director of public works, and I met with the director of community and economic development. I feel perfectly capable of voting. Thank you, Alder. Uh, Alder Weary. On the, on uh, thank you. I'll second the motion. There was no second, so if we can get that on the table. Very good. Motion's been made and seconded to and N1. Alder Weary? Thank you. Um, I would agree um, that if there are some performance issues that need to be discussed, we should have some closed session language here. Um, you know, this is a couple year appointment and these are powerful positions. Uh, I think we should not take it lightly and let's hold this up a couple weeks. We can uh, talk about it as council. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm, I'm just rather stunned that at the 11th hour, questions are coming up. Um, something must have just happened. There's been plenty of time for um, alders that had concerns to bring those concerns forward. Um, and, and I assume that nothing's been brought forward. I would certainly be against holding this item. Um, I. If, if there were problems, it should have been discussed, not at a public meeting, but it should have been discussed in a timely manner. So thank you. Thanks, Alder. Further discussion? Um, we've got Alder yes, Burnett. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I support the motion. It never hurts to have discussions regarding personnel in closed session. If for whatever reason the council does not confirm any of these appointments, our discussions about their performance is out there open and it may affect that person's ability to land other employment. So I think it is fair to, whether the council agrees or votes down any of these appointments, it's fair to every single one of those persons involved that we have this discussion you know, in closed session, as long as it's properly noticed 
And then the, the second point, I, I guess, uh, to Alderdorf, this, this was published, the agenda was published on a Saturday. So, you know, a little leeway here. We, we had only a few days to, if we did have issues with any of these appointments to the appropriate people at City Hall and with City Hall, you know, temporarily shut down the types of conversations that we would have had may not have been as easy to have due to the coronavirus. So I support the motion. Thank you. May I respond since my name was brought up? Alder Dorf, go ahead. I, I just would say that um, I'm certain that these appointments don't come as a complete surprise. And if there were concerns, one would assume that they would have been talked about long before the excuse of the agenda just coming out on Saturday. I'm sorry, I just, I don't buy that. We knew who was going to have these jobs. We knew who has had these jobs. And therefore, if there were concerns, they should have been brought up before this. Would we know if there were mayor's appointment? <clears throat> Alder Burnett, would you like to be recognized? Yeah, I mean, if she shot back that question, I would ask, how would we know if they're a mayoral appointment? We can't predict what the mayor is going to propose. Right, you, you certainly always have the opportunity to, to contact me. Um, Alder Dorf. The, the issue is, if there were concerns, then they came up during the tenure of the, the last two years, when these people, or the last year at least, when these people were doing their job, and if those concerns weren't worthy of being put forward while they were doing their job, why would we wait until now to suddenly bring this up? It, it just isn't making sense to me right now. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Stoyer. Thank you. Um, let me, let me, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, to Alder Dorf, um, just to answer something, I, I've had uh, numerous meetings with the mayor over time, you know, talking about various department heads. So it has been discussed. Um, and concerns too, different concerns that have come up over time. So it's not like it hasn't been discussed, it has been. So, you know, basically the mayor, um, uh, I asked if, if these are, you know, who, we, who is looking to move forward. And, and like Walter Burnett said, you know, sure, it seemed like a slam dunk as far as knowing who was gonna be on that list. But like he said, we only had a day or two to vet this or talk about it or, or think about it. So the fact that we didn't ask questions, questions have been asked all year or for two years. So, and concerns that have come up about certain things have come forward. So it's important to know that. And so I, I have a problem with extending it for a couple of weeks, vet it out in closed session, and nine, nine out of 10 times it'll work out. So I, I, I don't see the problem. So I'm, I'm for that as well. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just a question for Your Honor. I mean, you, this is uh, your staff you're working with, you're their boss. Um, assuming you put this together, were there, are there, do you have concerns that we should be taking up as a council that we, do you have concerns, uh, any, uh, your, how are your feelings on, on this? Thank yeah, you. I mean, I think they're pretty clear based on the slate of, of appointments in front of you. Um, so, I mean, there's always room for improvement on, on my part, on the part of everybody who works at the city on, I would suggest humbly on the part of council members as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's always a process of personal improvement, um, but I'm very comfortable with, uh, with senior staff who serve the city. I wouldn't be appointing these individuals if I didn't feel that way. Thanks, Alder. Um, I would just have a quick question um, because I am new and I don't know everything yet. Uh, is it always the case that at the beginning of the term, is this always the time that the staff is reappointed? So this wasn't a surprise to anyone actually at all. Okay, thank you. Okay, right. thanks Alder. Uh, let's see here. Alder Weary for a second time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll piggyback on some of the, the previous comments that, you know, truthfully the agenda did not come out till Saturday. So you can say you think who's gonna get appointed, but you don't, you don't really know. Um, this is the time to weigh in. I don't know how many times people say, well, you had the chance, you confirm appointments. Well, this is the time then that we talk about it when we confirm appointments. 
Um, these are important decisions, obviously. Um, who do we work for? The department heads or the citizens? You know, do we simply rubber stamp things as they come across? Oh, appointments. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Appointments. Or do we take a little time to vet it? And maybe we'll agree. Hey, these are things we can move on with, but it doesn't hurt anything to take a little time and do uh, address the problems that came up. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and Alder Gerlach, I, I appreciate uh, the fact that you have obviously proven to be a terrific student and have taken the time to meet with our department heads ahead of time. So I, I just want to be clear that um, my comments to that are really kind of one of the smallest bits of this uh, of my request to hold. Um, it, it, and I think the fact, again, that we didn't know I mean, I know that these appointments come before council. I cannot say that I knew it was going to come at this meeting. And so, um, well, certainly that was probably the case two years ago, admittedly this, I've only been through this process once myself. Um, but I think really, again, the purpose of the hold is so that we can properly vet some of this feedback we received. I expect that the mayor would support these individuals and, and that's why he's put them uh, before us to consider. But I think one of the greatest responsibilities that we have as a council is uh, is to approve appointments. And not only that of our department heads, but our commissioners and our committees. Um, and, and, and we ought to be having a discussion when, uh, when we do receive feedback from the public. Um, and so that's all I'm asking for. I, I personally, out of respect and dignity of, of any individual that might be involved in this discussion, that's why I've opted to hold this because I, I because I don't think that I want to have a public open discussion right now on the feedback that I've received. I think that that would be almost kind of classless, to be honest with you, when it comes to uh, some of the feedback that I've received at this point. And I think we can safely and securely do this with a hold, so that we can so that we can address the feedback that's been received and that we can properly take an action from that point. We are not jeopardizing anything as it relates to city operations to hold this. Let's hold this, let's, let's protect everybody that's involved, and let's do this with class. Thanks, Elder. <clears throat> so we have a motion and a second on the floor uh, to hold item N1. Uh, we're gonna use the board on this motion. Oh. Okay, hold on one moment, please. So that motion passes eight to four. Um, Alder Dorf, Alder Stevens, Alder Scannell, Al Alder Gerlach voted no with Alders Galvin, Johnson, Weary, Burnett, Vanderlee, Stoyer, Corpus Dax, and Lefebvre voting yes. All right, so we are on to item N2. These are <clears throat> Appointments of the Public Works Director. Entertain a motion here. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve these appointments by the Public Works Director. Any discussion here? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, those appointments have been made on two and three appointments by the Community Economic Development Director. Motion to approve. Second. Motion, motion made by Alder from the seventh. Alder Scannell seconded by Alder Lefebvre. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. On to N4. On standing. Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any discussion here? 
Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. You guys have it. And five, boards and commissions. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. You guys have it. Those appointments have been made as well. On to oh okay. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve report O, which is the report of the redevelopment authority from the meeting on April 14, 2020. Any items to handle separately here? Uh, Mayor two. Alder John. I just need to be noted as abstaining on item one as uh, the developer is a member of my executive committee that oversees my compensation. Very good. That is noted. Number uh, two. Number two will be held separately. Is that all? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. The item was pulled by uh, Alder Weary. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this question is either for Director Vaughn or Alder, Alder Person Johnson. Um, I think this is a solid idea. Um, is 100000 enough? How is the amount determined? Are, are we, is, is it more available? Or I just wanted more on that, please. Um, sure, Alder Weary, I, I can answer that. So uh, we started with $100,000. Um, that is what, what we have available um, in our revolving loan fund right now. So we can do that immediately. Um, that's not encumbered. Um, we just did find out um, yesterday, it looks like a, another applicant who was going to withdraw a loan of 250,000 will not be doing that. Um, so there's potential for that to be allocated into this. Um, I think we're gonna kind of see how the next week goes and how fast that money goes out the door uh, and then come back and, and potentially put more funds into that as needed. Um, and then potentially some of the block grant money that we'll be receiving um, you know, through the CARES Act may also go into it as well. So we're gonna start with 100,000, see how fast it goes, um, but we do have some flexibility um, about providing it. Okay, great, no, that's perfect, excellent idea. Good job. Thanks, Director Bonk, thanks, Alder. Uh, seeing no other requests to speak. Mayor, I have my button on. Alder Johnson, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, Alder Weary, just as an additional response, um, the, the funding that we're currently using is federal funding that does come with some restrictions as well, as Dr. Vonk alluded to. Um, whereas uh, one of the things that we've asked uh, of the RDAs to explore, and of course city staff, is to explore uh, possibility of other sources of funding. Um, I have uh, publicly talked about the Wisconsin Trust Fund uh, as an option. I don't think it's, I, I'm not necessarily suggesting that's what we need to do or where we need to go so much as it is to talk about options that perhaps don't come with requirements. And and I also sent an email to Dr. Vonk just recently um, to at least explore if we have any uh, excess uh, funding in any of our TIDs that might be able to be reallocated for this purpose. I saw that the city of Oshkosh had done that. So really the purpose of this particular item was to get it back to staff so that they can explore uh, additional funding sources that maybe don't come with the restrictions that our existing fund currently has. Thanks, Alder. Now, seeing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it, the ayes has been approved. On to P, report of INS. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to approve report P, which is the report of the Improvement and Services Committee from the meeting on April 8, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Number four. Any others? Item four will be handled separately. Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Report has been approved with the exception of item four. Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Weary to approve. Item was pulled by Alder Scannell. You have the floor. Yes. Uh uh, uh, I put in a communication so that uh, this wasn't on the Sustainability uh, Commission's agenda, so we couldn't 
uh, get it to INS in time for this year uh, if I hadn't done the communication. Uh, but this is something we are dealing with already. We don't need to refer this back. I'd just like to amend this a period after species and refer could just come right off. Uh, the, the commission is working on that. It's not necessary to refer this. Okay. So just deleting everything after species? Yep. Is the amendment? Yep. Amendment has been offered by Alder Scannell. Second, Johnson. Seconded by Alder Sc Johnson. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Item has been amended. Motion to approve. Motion made by Alder Scannell. Second. Second. Seconded by Alder Dorf to approve the item. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The item has been amended and approved. On to report of the Protection Policy Committee. A motion to approve. Motion made by Alder Stevens. Second. Seconded by Alder Scannell to approve report Q. Chair of the reports, <coughs> report of the Protection and Policy Committee from the meeting on April 6th. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. The report has been approved. Uh, granting operator licenses. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any names here for which you'd like to be recorded as abstaining? I have a uh, mayor. There's one with the same last name. I don't believe I know this person, but I would like to abstain all the same. Okay. Thank you, Alder. That will be noted. Any others? All right, that abstention has been recorded. Any names under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of the report, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, and the report has been approved, noting the abstention. Uh, to the Planning Commission. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Alder Stevens, second by Alder Scannell to approve report S, which is the report of the Planning Commission from the meeting on April 13, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. The report has been approved. On to T for the Finance Committee. Motion to approve. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell to approve report T, which is the report of the Finance Committee from the meeting on April 7, 2020. Any items here to be handled separately? Number two. Two. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those name. You guys have it. The report has been approved with the exception of item two. Motion to approve. Second. Motion Second. made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer to approve the item. The item was pulled by Alder Johnson. You have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this was discussed at committee and I did support the, the direction that the committee chose on this recognizing and, and I just wanted to be able to at least have the opportunity I guess to talk about publicly why why this is just being received in place and file. Um, it, it was uh, Director Ellenbecker had indicated that obviously the city is looking at shortfalls in a number of areas. Um, this particular item had only addressed a, a shortfall that we would see with uh, with our action to waive the liquor license fees. Um, I do think, however, that a much broader discussion uh, needs to be um, paramount and needs to be uh, something that the city acts upon fairly quickly. I think it's, um, you know, I, I think the potential for revenue reductions is fairly precipitous. And, and in particular, I'm looking at um, an article that was uh, that was printed in the Washington Post that talks about how 2,100 U.S. cities are, are bracing for budget shortfalls due to the coronavirus. Ne nearly nine out of 10 cities surveyed um, are, are signaling that they're going to expect a revenue shortfall, cuts in services, steep declines. And so, um, and, and while my understanding is that local governments cannot run deficits, I, I'm certainly open to uh, Director Ellen Becker or Attorney Chavez correcting that point if in fact it is incorrect, but I do think it is important that this become uh, an item that is a sense of urgency for city staff to address. Yeah, just before we go to Director Ellen Becker, I would totally agree with you, Alder Johnson, and 
uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors and the National League of Cities <clears throat> have been lobbying uh, very strenuously to have additional funds sent to um, all localities across the country. Unfortunately, there was another COVID bill that I think went through the Senate today is onto the House within the next few days, did not include any aid for state or local government. Um, the hope is that there will be some coming in the future uh, because you're absolutely right. You know, I think just about every local community, city, county, village, what have you, is gonna experience um, some revenue shortfalls. Uh, but Director Ellen Becker, I know you have uh, a bit of information that, that you could share um, at, at this time. Um, yes, um, I'm, I'm not sure I have the answer right now about whether or not a city can run a deficit and I would have to look into that a little bit more before I could answer that um, to be specific. Um, um, we did go through and we um, did reach out to all the department heads to, to ask, you know, where, what revenues they think they um, might come in short on. Some people gave me estimates, but we, at this point, we also don't know what time, how long this is going to last and how this could affect them. Um, obviously, we have permits, we have licenses, we have liquor license in which we have reduced fees on, the parking, we have water utility is um, going to be down on late fees. Um, there's just a handful, there's a lot of different revenue items that are going to be um, probably are going to co come in short and it's a little early at this point to tell um, compared to last year or even compared to budget. We also of course are um, have increased expenses um, as the mayor has also just mentioned and others probably have mentioned it also there are various grants and different aids available. Um, we have to just go and st um, try to uh, start applying for these different grants, see what we are eligible for. We don't know how many dollars will be coming in. In some cases, they might cover more than our expenses. It might help their, you know, whether or not it'll also help offset some of our shorts in um, revenues. Um, so um, I don't mean to um, not answer some people's questions, but at this point, we don't have a handle on how short we are on revenues. Part of it is how long will this last? If, uh, you know, the, the, um, Director Ditchite had said also, if, if Bay Beach doesn't open and they don't open until after Memorial Day, that could be $400,000. It just all depends upon how long this is going to last. Thank you, Director. Any further comments? Yes. Uh, Mayor? Uh, Alder Scannell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I see this as a, a budgetary issue. Um, I appreciate, I mean, it's obvious we're having shortfalls and that's a concern and we should be trying to do something about it. But I think to be working on our budget this early in the year is kind of a fruitless endeavor. Uh, it's an ongoing situation. We don't know where we're gonna end up. We don't know what's going to be available us until it's budget time and we have to deal with this. I think anything we do now could just end up being a useless endeavor because it's going to change next day, next week, next month. Uh, so I'm not really sure what we would do with this other than we know we're going to be short. We should try. I'm sure staff is keeping an eye on it. I'm sure they're problem solving as they're going along. And we should definitely be working with our uh, state and uh, federal reps to uh, help us as they should be helping every city um, to meet these shortfalls and these crises that we're in. Um, but other than that, I don't know practically, from a practical standpoint, uh, what we can do until it's budget time when we have all the information and all our resources and everything all put to us uh, at that time. To work on our budget now just seems uh, a fruitless endeavor to me. I don't know what we would accomplish that uh, whatever we come up with could just be completely put on its head the next day. I, uh, I appreciate the concern, and it is a concern, but I, from a council standpoint, I don't know what action we can take other than trying to get the attention of our state and federal representatives to hear our, uh, <laughs> how we're being pinched and uh, they help us. So um, I'm not sure, unless there's something I'm missing, I really don't know what uh, other alders are expecting to accomplish. Thank you. It's Alder, uh, Alder Lefebvre. Yes, um, I just wanted to bring up uh, informational. Uh, the Brown County Board is looking into the same issue, but they are not just focusing on the liquor licenses. They're looking at all fees 
that the county assess, and this is something that will be discussed at our next board meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. And yeah, I don't want to suggest that was the only thing that we looked at either. That that looked to us to be you know one of the most obvious things that we could do to ease the pressure on business, but certainly open um, to any other ideas that Alders have. Uh, Alder Burnett. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I I do um, with all due respect to Alder Scandal, I we we can't wait till the budget to talk about many of these things because the the revenue will be re reduced. We're not going to receive as much in revenue in the city that we budgeted for. So therefore, if we don't have a miracle save from the federal government to the state government, we're going to have to either increase revenue another way, which we did not levy for, we're maxed out on what we could charge existing property owners this year, or we need to cut expenses. We can't, we can't wait until October, November to figure out how we're gonna overcome this storm we're in we need to have the discussion now. And I, I, I have uh, proposed this a few times with the revenue loss that we have. The absolute last thing I would wanna do is to lay off city employees or cut health insurance. Trust me, that's like the very absolute worst thing we could do. But we should look at possibly reducing some hours if needed, or maybe not fill positions that are currently posted or delay capital purchases why in the world will we wait until October, November to have those discussions? We have to start thinking of these things and voting on these things soon, like within the next council meeting. And um, that's my that's my opinion. Uh, we're reducing revenue greatly, no fault of our own. We're in crisis right now. Therefore, we have to find ways to cut expenses. Otherwise, we're going to have a huge shortage. And we're going to be we're going to be owing money to the federal government that they allow some loan program. And then of course, future revenue will have to pay back the loan. So we gotta have these discussions now. We can't wait. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Yeah. Panel for a second time. No, All right, hearing no other requests to speak, all in favor of the motion to receive and place on file, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. That has been approved. On to personnel committee. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, I think. Seconded by Alder Cor Corpus Dax to approve report S, which is the report of the personnel committee from the meeting on April 7, 2020. Any items under this report you wish to handle separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it. The report has been approved. That was report U, by the way. I think I misspoke. Um, on to receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place on file. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to receive and place on file a municipal court report from March 2020. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. You guys have it. The report has been received and placed on file. Ordinance is first reading. And the rules. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to suspend the rules, take up these items with one roll call vote. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it, the rules are suspended. Motion to advance. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to advance items one through three to a second and final reading. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The item has been advanced. Those items have been advanced to a final reading. On to Committee of the Whole. <clears throat> so we will go Yeah, we'll we'll take up um, item one here and then we're gonna in all likelihood go to closed for item two. Move to approve item one. Again. A motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell to approve item one. Uh, discussion here. Yes, please. Alder Weary. I think you broke up, but I think you said Alderman Weary. I did, indeed. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, is this where we can uh, ask questions? 
questions of Chief Litton? Yes. Yes, you could. Okay. Chief, you still, still awake? I am here. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, I've had some people ask about this. I don't think most people know the county is the health department. It's not really us. You know, you see the bigger cities and they have the health department. Um, people are wondering, are we getting information out timely to people about um, new outbreaks? And, and sometimes there's a delay, you know, there's an outbreak and they don't really say where it is. And then a couple of days later, here's where it is. Is there any way to, to speed that up um, that you can see? People are craving information and, and they think it's the city, but it's really, you know, the county. Yeah, Alderweary, um, I know that there was some concern about that over uh, the weekend um, where we had uh, some uh, rapidly increasing numbers. Uh, again, um, the city falls under Brown County Health Department, and so they are the lead um, in the emergency operations center here, and we fall, kind of fall under their um, purview. Um, I can tell you that um, there is a, a report that comes out um, daily um, and I can just, uh, for instance, uh, this morning, as of this morning, we had 303 confirmed cases in Brown County. That was eight o'clock this morning. This afternoon at 417, we had 326 cases. And uh, while during this meeting, we've had 40 more cases that have, uh, the results have come back in as being positive. So um, having said all that, that just means that there are positive tests. It does not mean that at this point, we're overtaxing the hospitals or um, that those folks are seeking um, care in an ICU or things of that nature. It just means that we're seeing more and more of the tests come back positive. Um, so while I can certainly understand, you know, the issue of wanting to have, you know, information on a, you know, more rapid basis, um, that information does have to come through the health department. Okay, and, and Chief, I you know I appreciate the work you're doing, your your eyes and your ears, and you're our voice there. So, if you could just, if you can, <laughs> push for you know as much openness uh, as possible. I think people would appreciate that. Thank you for the work. Yeah, absolutely. I, I you know just to tell you, we have you know we have representatives from the police department and the fire department uh, represented in the emergency operations center. We have a live, so we're doing this virtually at this point. We have live links uh, into the emergency operations center into area command. We have a direct link in with um, the uh, health department. So there are discussions, ongoing discussions, multiple times a day um, where we are uh, doing a, a meeting just like we're doing right here, a Zoom meeting, uh, in order to exchange information and, and to give us the ability to uh, ask questions and to do, do as you just asked, to push uh, to move things along so I, I would I would uh, just you know um, tell you with some confidence that we do that every single day and that we will continue to do so until we get through this thanks chief sure thanks Alder thanks chief <clears throat> any further discussion on the item I, I do have a question mayor Alder Burnett go ahead yes on the uh, last paragraph well near the last paragraph it says it is further ordered that the period for which regular employees will continue to receive compensation based on their regular rate of pay and benefits, despite being unable to work, their regularly scheduled hours because of impact of COVID-19 has reduced, reduced or eliminated city services is hereby extended until April 24, 2020. That is Friday. Uh, Mayor, is there a plan um, regarding after the 24th? Have you? Yeah, I'll go to Director Falls. You can <laughs> lay out the city's response there. Yeah, for the the past month or so, we've been looking at positions, and if the positions can have um, their full schedule uh, during the COVID-19 uh, situation. And so far, we've done a great job of having people work remotely, and they've been able to get in their full schedules. We have less than uh, about five employees that have not been getting in their full schedule um, every week. And we have um, plenty, of projects for, plenty of projects for them to work on uh, throughout the city. So we feel pretty confident right now that we would not have to lay off any employees after Friday. Okay, when, um, heaven forbid, that's something that needs to happen. And of course, we never want that. But 
per the order that we're voting on now, who would make that decision? Is that strictly an executive decision or would that be an action of the city council? Uh, Attorney Chavez. Are you asking a decision for layoffs? Is that what your yeah. question is? Okay, so this order extends to the 24th, okay? So obviously we don't want to lay off or, you know, cut hours unless we absolutely have to but if that decision is needed maybe the revenue doesn't some other issue who would make the decision to extend this is this an action of the council the, the mayor through his executive power through the order attorney chavez is that you understand the question i i think i probably could answer that unless she wants to join in go ahead joel so, and correct me if I'm wrong, Attorney Chavez, but the, the proclamation from the mayor has to be confirmed or ratified by the council. So uh, this decision ultimately, ultimately would be made by the common council. So what I envision what would happen is um, I would work with the, so the human resources department would work with finance. We'd work with the law department. We'd work with the mayor's office. We'd look at our budget, look at what kind of decision we would have to make make a recommendation to the mayor, make that recommendation to the common council, and then we'd go from there. That's a, that's how I envision it happening. So consistent with the order, to, this, go to ahead. To add on, the actual determination as to who or, or which positions would be eliminated, um, or I'm sorry, would be laid off, uh, partly would be council because of the budget, like you'd identify which positions you feel like is, aren't as necessary um, during these times, but the individual positions, that is something that would lie exclusively with the executive. And that would only be with enacting this order? That would not be under normal condition? No, that's under normal conditions. The order, all this does is allow us to continue to fund those positions for this time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Weary? No, uh, no, right now. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion. Um, Alder Vanderleest has emailed me with an interest in speaking. Um, you are not <laughs> muted on our end, so you can go ahead if you'd like to say something. Can you hear me, Mayor? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, uh, my battery is low on this phone I got here, but sure. uh, I just wondered if we've enacted a. Uh, as far as the emergency, you said we put a freeze in any new hires at this time because of the budget. We uh, not hiring any new hirees right now. We're moratorium on new hiring. Has that been talked about at all? Yeah, and Director Falds can can address that as well. Thank you. Yeah, so we haven't put a a blanket freeze on hiring. I think we, you know, I think for any time, whether there's a pandemic or not. All of our department heads look at positions and whether we need them and what if they're urgent or not. So all of our department heads have been looking at any open positions and determining if they're necessary at this time. And then if we, we did not put a freeze on internal transfers. So if an individual transferred from one department to another, we typically, we have been allowing that to happen, but then looking at any new hires for vacancies, maybe external hires, we've been closely to determine if we need them at this time. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alder. All right, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. I did have a question on Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, when is our next council meeting? Is it May 26th or do we have one before that? Uh, I don't have that in front of me, but I believe it is much sooner than that. Uh, the 5th? Is there any... Okay, that's right. Is there any reason this just doesn't uh, go through the fifth and not, you know, not another five weeks or? Right. Yeah. I mean, the, that date was chosen because of the extension of the governor's order. Um, but, you know, let's amend the proclamation uh, any way you see fit. Uh, it's something I could certainly work with. Uh, but I would, you know, maybe just go to um, Chief Litton if there are any concerns with that, um, you know, he's really the one, obviously the emergency manager for the city. 
And he's the one that suggested um, with the endorsement of Chief Smith as well that this is something that we needed to extend. So Chief Lytton. Yeah, I would just say with the, uh, the emerging um, um, positive tests that we're starting to see uh, in the city, um, we don't know to the extent um, there, there is some ramped up testing that will be, that will be going starting in full earnest uh, tomorrow. Um, we certainly don't know the extent of how widespread and, and how many positives we're going to have. And we certainly don't know the demographics of the population that have been uh, testing positive, meaning those that might be that fall with, within the parameters of being at risk, uh, those over 60 and those with some underlying conditions. We do not have that information at this point. So um, I, I certainly don't you know, if you only want to extend till May 5th, I, I really don't have any issue with that. If we need to extend it again at that point, I think the council could take it up at that point. So I don't necessarily have any argument with that. Uh, just knowing that we may have to come, you know, have to address it once again on May, on May 5th. Okay. Thanks, Chief. I, I certainly have no problem with giving the flexibility and power for our chiefs to do what they need to do and protect our employees during this time. But it, I'm a little hesitant, and apologies, Mr. Mayor, but some of the freelancing, you know, the ability for you to, to do things is what would trouble me. <laughs> I asked last time what you might do, and, and of course, uh, a lawsuit came out. So I, that's where my, my concern comes in. Uh, I would make a motion to have it expire May 5th at our next council meeting, and if we need to move forward again after that, we we'll certainly can. Motion's made. Second. Seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. 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 Okay, I think we'll use the use the board there. Can you please vote? I'm trying to. For some reason, I have been logged out. I'm trying to log back in. Uh, can we record your vote? Do a voice vote? Do a voice vote? Yes, yes, Alder, we can do a voice vote. Alder Gerlach, you can vote verbally. I am voting no. Thank you. I just put it in. <laughs> no problem. Yes, thank you. Motion passes seven to five. Alders Dorf, Galvin, Stevens, Scannell, and Gerlach vote no. Alders Johnson, Weary, <coughs> Brunette, Vanderlees, Stoyer, Corpus Dax, and Lafay vote yes. So the um, proclamation has been amended. Entertain a motion to approve. Motion to That's approve amended. is amended. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. To approve as amended, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The item has been approved. Now we're on to item two, consideration with possible action on Green Bay Packaging, Inc. Manufacturing Personal Property Assessments Appeal. Um, I, we are recommending a, a closed session discussion Hope here. We're going to closed session. Second. Motion made by Alderdorf, seconded by Alder Scannell. Alderdorf, can you read the language? Yes, I will. The council may convene in closed session pursuant to section 19.851G, Wisconsin statutes, for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel, body, governmental body, who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. The council may thereafter reconvene in open session pursuant to section 19.852 Wisconsin statutes to report the results of the closed session of the agenda. Thank you, Alder. Uh, so we will use the board here. Thank <laughs> you. 
the stacks. Can you please vote? <laughs> What? Uh, all the all corpus stacks. stacks? No. Okay. So, what would you? How would you like to be recorded? Okay. All right. Thank you. Did you get it? Yes. We we have it. So one sec. Okay. So that motion passes. Um, 11 to 1 with one abstention. There's a 11 to 0 with one abstention? No, 11, 11, it passes 11, right, 11 yes, 0 no, one abstention. Got it. Is that an intentional abstention, just so we have that recorded properly? It was me. I, I just really didn't understand exactly what I was voting about, so oh. I decided to abstain. Yeah, yeah. Understandable. All right, um, we are in close. Okay. It might take a moment here for Ms. Jeffries to move the public members into the waiting room. So just hold tight. And then, all, uh, Mayor, uh, we would like to have um, uh, Director Ellen Becker, Clerk Teske, Attorney Chavez. Who else in the? Um, do we need uh, Director Vonk? Who else needs to be in the closed session from staff? I'll defer to Attorney Chavez there. I believe that's everybody who's needed. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, we are back in open session. Move right. to go back into open session. Second. Motion made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Scannell to move back into open session. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. We're back in open session. Motion, motion. For staff to proceed as directed. Second. 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 Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to proceed as directed by staff. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And then we're on to resolutions. Motion to suspend the rules. A second. Motion made to suspend the rules by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. Uh, take these items up in one roll call vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it, the rules are suspended. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, I think Alder Corpus Dac seconding um, to adopt resolutions one through three. We will use the board. Okay, those resolutions pass 12 nothing. Thank you, Ms. Jeffries. On to referral of petitions and communications. Any? Like that one, Mayor. I'll just try to go ahead. Okay, am I on? Yep. All right. All right, this is uh, for protection of policy. <clears throat> To create a Green Bay City resolution to the state of Wisconsin asking Governor Evers to designate grocery workers as, a first, as first responders, thus opening up possible health and financial benefits. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. <clears throat> Additional communications? I, I uh, have. Alder Corpus Dax? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm not sure if this should go to protection on policy or parks and rec, but looking into newer, larger signs at parks indicating that dogs must be leashed at parks and or trails and potentially a social media campaign reminding residents that um, dogs should be leased as well as other uh, appropriate 
job owner um, ordinances. Attorney Chavez? Okay. Policy. Policy? Protection and policy. Yeah, we, we, we addressed that once before. Uh, Attorney Chavez? Policy. If, if it's dog leashes, it's going to be protection and policy. Okay. And, uh, Alder Sawyer, would you mind amending yours to instead of grocery retail? Uh, I'd, I'd be fine with that. Thanks. Uh, we've, Thank you. Okay. Alder Johnson? Thank you, Mayor. Um, this one is for Finance Committee. Uh, to consider and discuss establishing a budget forecast process to position the city to strategically respond to anticipated revenue shortfalls and additional expenses from the impact of COVID-19. Uh, Chris, I'll send this text to you. And uh, Diane, I just want to, or Director Ellenbecker, I just want to emphasize that I'm, I'm focused on the process. Thanks, Alder. Alder Galvin. Thank you, Your Honor. I've actually got uh, several. Um, one for Park and Rec, that the uh, Park and Rec Department set up a plan to distribute more garbage cans to our city parks, um, and not just during the, the summer season, but year-round with the amount of use of the parks, especially now. Uh, there's a lot more trash around, and I've had a lot of complaints. There's nowhere to put it. People would like to put it somewhere, but there's nowhere to put it. Um, I have another one for, I believe this is protection and policy, that the... Uh, uh, city clerk's office have a um, plan for upcoming elections in August and uh, November and that that plan be our committee um, review uh, by July 15th so that proper steps can be taken to implement those plans and make sure we have the procedures and employees in place um, to meet any issues that may come up. Uh, then I have another one for a bike, ped, and uh, traffic, that the no parking signs um, on, at St. Mary's, former St. Mary's grade school at Irwin and Cass Street be removed since there's no longer a school there. And then for improvement in services uh, for the sidewalk repair program, that uh, committee look at some alternatives to charging residents for uh, sidewalk repairs and uh, charging interest over the, the term of the loans that they do offer citizens. I've got some suggestions for that I'll present at committee. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Brunette? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I, I have three, and Clerk Teske, I will email these to you. Um, there are a couple that are long. Uh, first one, I believe, would be protection and policy to refund reinspection fees at 2468 West Point and for the city to appeal to the federal government to allow for the property's shed to remain. And second one would be protection and policy, I believe, for consideration with possible action on Green Bay Common Council to begin meeting a minimum of twice a month effective June 2020. There are too many critical issues requiring attention and action to meet once a month. And then the last one to improvement and services to amend and update the stormwater utility ordinance to include and explain the impact trees have on stormwater retention and drainage and to provide a dollar credit to property owners who have trees planted or growing on their property in order to be consistent and fair with what the majority of the Common Council passed in November 2019. If the ordinance and equivalent residential unit calculations are not adjusted appropriately, then forestry expenses should no longer be paid for by stormwater utility rates effective January 2021. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any others? All right, entertain a motion to refer all petitions and communications. Motion to refer. Second. 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 Okay. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf to refer all late petitions and communications to the proper authority. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. aye. The ayes have it. Those petitions and communications have been referred. Adjournment. 
Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Alder Scandal, seconded by Alder Vanderlees. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, we're adjourned.